Okay, it is four o'clock, and so we will call the meeting to order. Um, we are not usually in this room, so uh, we'll all get used to our microphones. We feel very official. Uh, my name is Jennifer Taub, and um, I'm the chair of the Local Historic District Commission. Um, we're uh, very excited that this is our first um, official meeting with a full commission. We've had some vacancies, so um, I'm delighted. I think we'll go around and introduce ourselves. As you may know, Nate Malloy is also, um, he's the senior planner who uh, began uh, working with the commission um, as staff uh, last month. So we're thrilled to have Nate here, and then we'll go around and introduce ourselves and our affiliation. Okay. I'm Kim Lumley, the real estate representative. I'm Karen Winter, resident. I'm Bruce Coldham. I'm a full position of the architect on the commission. And again, I'm Jennifer Taub. I live in the uh, North Prospect Lincoln Sunset Local Historic District. Morianne Adams. I'm in the same local historic district. I'm just going to mention that if the meeting runs over, I have to leave at 6, so I don't want anybody to feel personally insulted. <laughs> Okay, so um, we have uh, three items um, on the uh, agenda today, and with each one, um, we will ask that the applicant come um, and make a presentation on their application, and then the commissioners um, will have questions that we will ask of the applicant, and then we will open it up to public comment and ask any members of the public that are here um, to come forward. And then with, for each application, um, after the public comment, we will um, close the evidentiary, what we call uh, phase of the meeting. And while you're still here, the commissioners will um, discuss the application amongst ourselves. And w during the discussion, we may have uh, additional questions of the applicants. And then we will, you know, hopefully be able to reach a decision on each application if for some reason the discussion, um, as with the last item on the application, uh, we probably won't have the time by when we close at 6.30 to um, act on perhaps a third application, then we just keep the hearing open and continue at our next regularly scheduled meeting. Um, and we'll, before I um, ask each applicant to come up, um, Nate, will, would you like to um, summarize the applications? Sure, so the first application is uh, 24 North Prospect Street. It's for uh, window replacement. And I have to keep holding the button, that's interesting. The, um, yeah, so the, you know, they're redoing the windows. Some of the windows are replacing in kind, so it looks similar, and um, I think it's just one window on the north facing side that they're changing the, the appearance of the window. So I can pull up an, an image of that on the computer, and I'm not sure if there's uh, an applicant here for 24 North Prospect. Oh, Perfect. okay. Um, David Litvak? Okay, yeah, please come and present. Oh, good. I can pull up the... Uh... Well, Nate summed that up just right. Um, it's a, the north window is the only window we can see from the road. There are two other windows. There's that north window with a arrow. Um, that is currently a pair of double hung, and we're going to change, we want to change that to a, a, a larger window, same configuration, two over two, each double hung, but there'll be, it'll be a sliding window instead. And the other two windows, they look the same, but neither of them are visible from the road. Okay. You got photographs? Oh, you do have photographs. There's okay. another, an additional one. Yeah. So that's what you can see from the road. You go around the corner a little bit, and you'll see a sliding glass door, um, an aluminum clad sliding glass door yeah, we're not gonna that's that. off the grade and has no access. We're just going to change that to a window that looks like that window on the north side. And that, that window doesn't appear to be visible from the street, so it wasn't captured in the images. OK. Oh, we have a picture. We have that picture. Of the slider? Yeah, well, that's, yeah. Oh, yeah. But if, if, if it's not visible, it's not under the purview right. of the commission. So. so do you have a picture? So, so the window that you're replacing will look the same? It will just be different material? 
Uh, it will be a different style window. It'll be upgraded glass. It'll have the same grid pattern. And we'll trim it so it looks the same. But it won't do that. We've got it. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's a slide. Instead of instead of doing that, right? And that, Will it be wood? It doubles the size of the opening. You're doubling the size. You, double, you know, because in a double hung, it opens halfway. Now we'll have two, and when that opens halfway, it's twice the opening that it was previously. Yes. So it's two double hungs. Yes. If you open them both. Yeah. Then but it's equal. You've got but fifty percent of free air. Yeah. 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 Could you push the? Could you push? It? Oh. Yeah. Uh, yes. But just to clarify, yeah. so the right now the window right here that's with the red arrow, you're right. not enlarging the the framing part of it. No, so actually, it will be a little bit smaller. smaller. Yes, yeah, so it's a little a little different size, but otherwise, it's very similar in appearance with a yep. with a central. Two over two, uh, we yep. say. Yep. Yep. Two over right. two. Yep. Yes. Okay. So you're saying that the rough opening is staying the same size, more or less. And the no, wind? It's going to be a little wider, a little shorter, because okay. it's going to be in a bathroom. It's okay. currently a laundry, and it's due to transition to a bathroom. Hmm. But the sashes will be twice the size because there are two sliding sashes and not four double hung sashes. Exactly. Yep. Okay. That's correct. Now I understand. And will it be wood paint or a uh, no, no? They're not wood. Uh, question? Uh, so I notice um, that if you, I, I can't point, I, uh, but the second window from the, from the right. That's the kitchen window. I understand, uh, but I'm wondering about the size and the symmetry between what you're doing in what will be the bathroom and the current kitchen window. Will they be similar size or? They will. Vertically. Vertically. Yes, okay. Okay. Are there any other questions? And do you have any, Bruce? I don't think so. I just want to be. So we've established that there are two sashes, they're sliding, but the Munton arrangement in those sliding sashes will reflect the existing situation. That's so. Basically, we'll have a window, a pair of windows, which will be have uh, the casing material around as is currently. Will be similar, yeah. So essentially, uh, from an appearance standpoint, it's going to be hard to tell the difference. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, excepting that it's going to have a sill height slightly higher because it wants to be a bathroom. So I think I can understand that I don't want to have a shower with. Right. I'd like to have a Full higher length, sill. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Okay. Okay, I think we got it. Thank you. Well, thank you. And are there any uh, members of the uh, public that have any questions or comments on this application? Okay, thank you. Great. So Thanks with that, um, can we move to? Do move to yeah. close the public hearing. Public hearing. Yeah. All in favor? Okay. We can, we can still push our buttons, right? Yeah, we right? can still push our it's buttons. Nice yeah. pushing buttons. Right. <laughs> Good. It's open to the public. Um, Staff recommends to, you know, approve the certificate of appropriateness because it is substantially similar in appearance and size to what's existing. I agree. So I could move uh, that um, we approve a certificate of appropriateness for the... Uh, Property at it's 24, 24 North Prospect North Prospect Street to uh, replace a window in view. Um, we find that the proposed uh, uh, alteration meets the criteria found in Section 8.1 and 8.2 of the Amherst Local Historic District Bylaw. And number two, that uh, the proposed uh, alteration will have uh, no apparent change in appearance um, and will have no negative impact to the um, local historic district, the Dickinson local historic district um, 
I guess we're still there. Yes. Okay. Um, that's it. Uh, second? Uh, Jim? Okay. All in favor? Yes? Okay. <laughs> Wait, Congratulations yeah, on your window. Okay. Thank you very much. I've still been seeing somebody wait so long to yeah. <laughs> Okay. So um, with that, we'll move to the next application. Um, and Nate, would you like to summarize that? Yeah, we can wait. Um, I'm just going to. I don't know if you have additional plans or um, I just drag this to the desk. And, uh, yeah, so what, what's viewable now is the um, the site plan, the drawings, and the image of the garage. Do you have additional material, or is that? Um, we have a few more images of the garage. Oh, oh, just of the garage? Yeah, we just did a, we had a site visit today, so I think we're. Yeah, and you can always zoom in. What does that mean? Sure, I'll, I'll leave you to it if you want to. Chris Farley. Yes. Okay. Chris Farley. No, next to him. Musical okay. chairs. Sure. So, uh, you know, this application is for, uh, at Seven Peace Place, it's for the removal of a one-car garage uh, with the replacement of a new, um, you know, two-family home that's um, in roughly the same location as the garage. The, uh, you know, this application came before the, it's a new application, a similar project came before the commission earlier with, you know, very similar proposal. The house was actually a little bit bigger, slightly different with the front entry porch. Um, the applicant, after the zoning board process, made modifications and is coming back now with a new application. So what's before the commission now is a uh, design that's responded to the concerns of the neighbors by pulling the house forward. It's slightly smaller in terms of its width and height, and the front entry porch has been uh, removed, and there's a side entry porch. The, you know, it's in a Greek revival style, so, uh, you know, the architecture, the treatment, um, you know, staff sees that it, um, you know, matches and is similar to what's in the surroundings and the, you know, the size and scale of the property of the proposed, um, you know, single duplex meets, you know, or is similar to what's in the district as well. The, um, uh, you know, I think the commission's first role is to look at, you know, whether or not, you know, the removal of the garage has an impact to the district and then, you know, to look at uh, the new, new unit that's being proposed. And I think with that, we can have the applicant provide a presentation. If you want to provide more detail. And if you could uh, say your name before you speak, that would be, we'd appreciate that. I, I, I just wanted to introduce the three okay, of us. Great. Uh, this yep. is uh, the property owner, Joel Greenbaum. Uh, my name is Chris Farley. I'm the architect with Kuhn Riddle Architects. And this is uh, Bucky Sparkle. He's the civil engineer. So, okay. um, Nate, I think you gave a, a pretty good description of the overall project. Um, I think what we'd like to do is do a quick review, uh, uh, have Bucky do a quick review of the site and the, the improvements and uh, a few of the changes that were made from uh, the previous application. Uh, and then I'll talk a little bit about the, the proposed duplex okay. structure. <clears throat> that sounds good. Okay. okay. Thank you, Chris. Uh, again, my name is Bucky and uh, I'm going to talk about the site. I see we have the Closed site here. So um, before getting uh, into this more deeply, I'll just sort of uh, sketch in the uh, existing conditions. So I think we're okay here. But thank you. Uh, and we saw photos of the garage earlier, but the the main difference between the proposed site plan and the existing conditions plan is that there is a garage where I have the big magenta marker on the screen, uh, and we can talk about that more in detail. From a, a civil site plan, I, I've got the easy part of this job here. Uh, we're, we're taking down the garage, and at least that is the intention, uh, replacing it with a two-family <clears throat> uh, dwelling. And from the last time we were here, I just want to point out the changes to the site plan. So as Nate pointed out, the building is a little more narrow. 
the front porch was removed so it's a lot shorter and that was done primarily to save the spruce trees that were in the back. This is some of the feedback we got from the planning board. So in order to get out of the root zone for these trees, the building had to get, it used to go right up to the back lot, or setback line. So this entire area has been opened up by removal of the porch and changing dimensions of the structure. Uh, the other change that has uh, a degree of significance here is that we have uh, currently two, four parking spaces between the buildings. We used to have four parking spaces over here. As you can see, we now have two, so these have been eliminated. Uh, additionally, we are adding some screening for headlights through this section and through this section um, in addition to the stormwater management uh, and utility construction, which is all sort of site plan planning board stuff. Those are the changes to the site of significance, I think. I don't think I, did I miss anything on that. Maybe just the, 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 the uh, curve of the road has been adjusted. Oh, this is true, yeah. In getting into access, there were, were other questions uh, through the planning board process where we've, we've added a little more pavement over here to create a wider swing radius uh, out of consideration for the occasional pedestrians that come through this area. We're also adding uh, some pedestrian safety signs on the street. And again, that's you know mostly site plan stuff, but at least you should be aware of those changes. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, so I, I think what I'd like to do is just to talk uh, a little bit about the garage first, since the part of this proposal is to remove this one car garage. Um, there's some uh, conflicting information uh, uh, from the research that's been done about the date of the garage. Uh, we're prepared next week to go before the Historical Commission for a demolition delay uh, hearing on, on this garage. Um, so I, I think it's my understanding that, that, that the decision about w how old the garage is and, and, and whether it's significant has been moved to the Historical Commission for that hearing. Um, but, uh, as I said, it is the intention to, to, to remove this and, um, and to replace it with the, with the duplex. Um, so the proposed uh, uh, building, uh, this is the, the first floor plan here. Uh, this is the, the front of the building uh, in plan, which is this elevation uh, in the upper left. Um, when we previously came, became before the board, there was a front porch, so uh, across the front of the building, and then it wrapped around to the side. Uh, as Bucky said, in order to shorten the building and to save the trees in the back, we eliminated the front porch, uh, maintained the side porch, so that both entries, uh, the entries to both uh, units are off of this side porch. Uh, this entry here uh, goes into the first floor unit and the entry here uh, uh, goes inside, up a set of stairs, and then comes out essentially in the same spot. Um, uh, the style of the building is a Greek revival. Uh, it has a, a simple uh, enclosed pediment uh, that faces P's place. This is, uh, this is the elevation uh, if you were to be walking or driving uh, into P's place off of uh, Halleck Street. This is what you would see. Um, the, uh, uh, the first floor windows are a little bit taller than the second floor windows, which is typical of many Greek Revival uh, buildings. And in fact, you can see that in some of the neighboring buildings as well. Um, uh, we intend on the side porch to uh, have the support columns be uh, Doric columns. Uh, that would support a very simple entablature uh, and, and uh, a roof edge. Um, and then this, there, there would be a, a historically accurate uh, cornice and, and a small entablature on the main building. Um, uh, there's a little, uh, a little bit of a cross gable here on the west side, which is what uh, this piece is here, the two bedrooms. Um, from the previous application, we've reduced uh, the height of the building by two feet. We've reduced the width of the building by two feet and we've removed the front porch uh, and uh, thus reduced the, the length of the building by about six feet, so it's... Oh, 
okay. Uh, I'm sorry, Joel just reminded me that we also uh, 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 reduced the overall size of the building by two feet, so the, old, the footprint has been reduced by eight feet in order to save the trees uh, at the back of the property here behind the, behind the building. Um, uh, the proposal is that the materials, uh, the siding materials and the trim materials will be, will be painted wood. Uh, the colors here are meant uh, uh, to, to represent the, the, the currently proposed colors. Uh, the body of the house would be kind of a, um, a, a, a rose color. Uh, the, the pediment uh, uh, on the gable ends would be a slightly sh lighter shade. Uh, the windows would be black, they'd be uh, clad wood, so they'd be aluminum clad on the outside, uh, wood on the inside, but the cladding would be black. Uh, the trim would all be white, uh, painted wood trim. Um, uh, the, the porch would have a, most likely a composite deck, uh, gray decking material. Uh, sh uh, asphalt shingle roof, most likely a medium uh, gray color. Um, on, the, on the east side of the building right here, uh, in plan, it's right here, there'll be a three-sided enclosure of two uh, containers, one for uh, trash, one for recycling. Uh, they, they'll be screened from the public on this face uh, and, and certainly from the back uh, from uh, any views uh, that might come through the, the, uh, the properties on McClellan Street. Um, there are a couple of exterior lighting fixtures. Uh, there's a fixture here on the west side of the building. Uh, this fixture is intended to illuminate this part, uh, the west part of the site, which is where the four parking spaces are. Uh, it would be on a motion sensor, so if somebody drove up and tr wanted to come into the building, the light would go on, uh, and then after a couple of minutes, it would go off. Uh, on the back of the building, there's a second means of egress coming from this uh, staircase here. Uh, and there's a, a wall-mounted sconce uh, uh, downcast, which is meant to illuminate that second means of egress. Um, the only other fixture, lighting fixture proposed is that uh, here, uh, uh, um, just off the porch, there would be a six-foot high downcast freestanding post-mounted light. Uh, it would match in style the light uh, on the back of the building. Um, all the lights would be, would be shielded and downcast per regulations. And I think that's it. That's the, that's the basics of the building. Um, Bucky, anything to add from your end or Joel? Okay. That's, that's the okay. overview. Right. Thank you. Yep. Um, I just wanted to respond, Nate, with, um, <clears throat> regarding the garage that whether or not the garage is over 50 years old or built within the last 50 years, we will still vote on whether. Yeah. Sure, so the, you know, there's, um, in the town, the uh, demolition delays in the zoning, so the historical commission looks at things that could be potentially historic over 50 years. The local historic district, if it's in the district, looks at any removal or demolition, whether or not it's an older or newer building. So, you know, um, so for this, they're looking at both the demolition or removal of the garage and then also the new structure. So, you know, the certificate would encompass the, both of those pieces. So it is under the purview of the commission. Yeah. So even so if we, we were, even, we even, if, you, yeah, even if you weren't proposing a new structure, taking down the garage would have to come before the commission just as its own project. And so you know, my thought, um, just quickly, if we went back to the site plan, we, we had a site visit today and it looks like, just for reference, that the newer structure is actually out quite a bit compared to the existing porch and front steps of the existing house, and it looks like the roadway is being made narrower. So right now it's pretty, Peace Place, the pavement is somewhat wide, so you can almost have parallel parking on the north side. And so it looks like what you're doing is you're actually gonna create more lawn in front of the existing house with a longer walkway to the, to the pavement. Is that, is that accurate? So where, I'd be curious where the, exist, where the proposed house is, where is the existing garage located? If you, if, if someone were to say, okay, where's the front of the garage? I got a pretty good We'll idea. need to pull up the other documents here. That'd be fine if... PC. USB. Is it this one, the D? I can't tell, MRC catalog? Is that your... 
Can, can, can I can I just pull just pull yeah. it out? Let's see which one goes away. That was the one. Just to clarify, so we had questions about the, the pavement right. and the existing garage. So let me right. zoom in a little bit here. Just so we get a sense of the location of the proposed structure. Right. Well, all right, so the, the existing garage, mm -hmm. uh, it, you'll see uh, this line continues on the proposed plan as well. This is uh, uh, considered the setback, Back, right. All right, front setback. So you'll see that the garage is over the side setback by a little bit and a, a couple of feet short of the front setback. And you'll also notice that the hatched area, this is everything. Oh, I'm sorry, yes. I'll, I'll speak the same, but just bring this in. Yeah. Uh, all right, so that the hatched area is a proposed removal of both the building and existing pavement. So we are looking to diminish the width of the pavement all through this area and basically take this existing parking and make it a safer condition, really, and turn it this way. So there won't be parking there? No, not, okay. not through here. Not the, on that the parking street, is that being turned, and you'll right, see right. it resides, yeah. it resides right. in this area right. through exactly. here. Exactly, OK. Uh, and the front walk, instead of coming out and then sort of connecting to this little corner of asphalt, is being extended straight to the proposed pavement line. Yes, yeah. it's, it's the same. This existing line here um, is where the, the new walk will come to. Uh, so that's, that's the change. Um, uh, the new curve to widen the radius or the of, P's, of the elbow in yes. P's place, will that follow the cross hatching? Yes, yes. You'll see that we're actually going to add a little bit of pavement, just a sliver of a triangle over here. But in terms of removals, then we're arching through, and we can go to the next sheet to show that better. So you, you receive more um, street for cars because those cars aren't parked there. Yes, and it's a safer turning radius, right. uh, better for emergency vehicles. Yep. Allows the cars who are parking now they're parking parallel, which is yeah. a little awkward. But also, then they have to do a funky, I mean, especially without the, they can back up now several car lengths and, and do a T-turn in the existing garage driveway, but that's going away. So the, the existing parallel parking would create a, a nightmare right. to try and turn around. It was concern for safety for the other houses that, act, that turn there, correct? Um, the, the safety concern had to do with pedestrians walking in the pavement in the street. Yeah, OK, continue. So, but if we go, if we jump from here to the proposed conditions, we'll see yeah. how this works. It's not that, okay, <laughs> here we go. Um, so here's that front setback line that I spoke of, and the side setback runs uh, along this line here. The building's actually inset, it's a couple of feet, so we're moving the whole building to the west uh, by maybe four feet, uh, and the old garage, the corner and the face of it was around here, and for the purpose of saving the spruce trees in the back, we're dragging, not only have we shortened the building by eight feet, but we're dragging it a little further forward as well, um, mostly at the request of the residents to the rear, um, which came out of the planning board process. But you can see the, there's a little bit of pavement through here that we're adding, and then effectively this is existing pavement, and we're gonna add a curb through here to control this, the water to keep it from going, because right now it would just, it drains right through here, so we're gonna grab it and make sure it's controlled and sent to the rain garden, because we do have some stormwater controls for all the new impervious area. Okay. Is there anything else on the site plan? No, thanks, I just wanted, you know, the commission when we were there just to get a reference for, you know, with the existing house, you know, where the porch is and the steps and the relationship of what's being proposed, just, you know, they can get a sense for its location on the site. 
So that, that was helpful. Okay. So I had a question. With the four cars that would be parking between the two houses, um, do they all, is it one in front of the other? Yeah, I have a, a couple of vehicles sort of sketched in, you know, it's a real size between. Oh, I see, there they are. Yeah, yeah. so there is stacking right. for, for two of the vehicles. They're, they're going to have to know each other. Right. Um, but they're all living in the same space. Yeah. I mean, there's two units, but I, I'm expecting that, you know, as part of the lease, uh, Joel would probably have one aligned being one unit <laughs> and one alignment being the other unit. It wouldn't make sense to have separate units parking each other in. Uh, so that's the that's the situation for parking. Okay. I'm not sure. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> no. I'm new to these meetings, so if the question is not applicable here, just let me know. Let me know. Is, is this geared? Are the bedrooms the same size, or is there a master bedroom unit in each of the units? Is it, uh, is that not? Uh, information that we can ask. Yeah, the, ask the interior. Can't. The interior is not really part of the review here, so we're not. But the commission is not looking at use at all. It's really the architectural view from the exterior and how it's viewed okay. from the street. So, you know, I, I, I would, I would recommend that, unless you want to answer it, they don't, they don't need to answer it for this okay. part of this review. It's okay. really about, you know, if, if, for instance, if there was a master bedroom and it was punching out of the side of the house and there was, you know, some, some funny angle to the house because now they have this big master bedroom, then the commission can say what's happening in that space. But for here, you know, it's not apparent that that's happening. So the, the interior use isn't really guiding the exterior design. I'm, 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 hap I'm happy to answer the question even, even though it's not yeah. really part of, part of your purview. The intention is that these are apartments. Um, they'd be rentals. Uh, the three bedrooms on each level are really intended to be the same size so that there isn't really a hierarchy. Uh, hmm. They're all pretty much the same size and it isn't, uh, none of them have attached bathrooms. There's a common bathroom for all three bedrooms. Well, the concern is then that potentially six cars to park if, you, if it's, if three, if it's, if it's not, if it's, you hear my question. I, I, no, I understand completely. And uh, the way uh, Joel's uh, 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 rentals would go is that each apartment would have access to only two spaces. Right. There's a parking sticker that would be required, which is checked on a regular basis. Um, and, and so any, any cars that would be parking here um, in addition to the four spaces for the, for the two apartments would be towed. And it's anticipated it would, you know, be unrelated people living. Right. Yeah. Okay. Right. That, thank you. Thank you. That Perfect. helps. Um, Chris, a couple of questions. Um, but first, uh, I'm, I note that uh, you all have been before and, and you're coming back again because you've made changes. And generally speaking, I think we understand that those changes are all, well, you could call them de minimis if they were but they're, they're, they're minimizing uh, the impacts that we might have been concerned about um, in most respects. But since you're back um, and you're taking your life in your hands once again, and since we did this site visit and uh, I parked on uh, North Pleasant Street and walked up, uh, um, what is Halleck. it, Halleck? There's a couple of things I noticed that I thought uh, I just wanted to find out about. First of all, you're, you're, you mentioned the closed gable. Are you cladding that in clapboards the same way as uh, you are cladding the rest of the house? The, the, the intention is that the, the main block of the house, the first two floors would be uh, uh, horizontal clapboards painted. Uh, the enclosed gables would be uh, most likely a flush wood condition of wider boards uh, as oh, it's represented in the... Thoroughly excellent. That's what I noticed as I was walking down the street and I thought, wouldn't it be nice if that happened there too? Because that seems to be the pattern in the neighborhood. The second question really is a confirmation. I've looked, I've, I've got your previous uh, submission here as well, so I have additional material. Um, it looked as though your, your um, corner boards are wide, at, uh, at least, because uh, I put my hand across the corner boards going down the street, and most of them are essentially eight inches wide. Um, 
I don't suppose they are eight inches, but I hope they're at least six, or are they indeed eight? Even if they recess their I'm thinking of the actual corner boards, Joel, not the inside corners, the outside corner yeah, boards. Corners, yeah. the, the, the intention, uh, especially on the porch, is that the, the, the pilasters or corner boards related to the door columns would be sized similarly to the columns, so they would probably be 10 inch. Uh, but the intention is to be is to have the, the corner boards around the building to be at least a full six inches or maybe possibly seven and a quarter to be a full one by eight. Okay. Well, once again, that feels very good um, to me anyway. And the, 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 only, the, the question that I had, which is perhaps now a comment, um, I did notice that the building seemed to be even a foot or two further um, away from the drive than last time, and last time there was a porch there. So, in fact, the one change that I note that's not not minimizing is the impact at as you come down the driveway because that mass of the building is closer to you, and I understand that you're doing that to um, make a better shot at keeping those trees alive on the back boundary, and I understand, I think, now that that was... Um, a cause for concern um, by the neighbours in a previous hearing in another body. Um, from our point of view, though, um, it feels, I mean, I can see that site plan there. It looks like you've got about three feet between the curb and the face of the building right at that point there. And I'm wondering whether that could be made to be five. It just feels... Uh, the next, you know, every foot there is, is going to be noticed. I, I guess, the, if I can just digress for only a moment, the new building that's been built, uh, the five-story building or whatever it is, just down the road from that, has got a remarkably invasive uh, um, impingement upon the sidewalk, and I suspect that uh, residents now are probably rather sensitive to big buildings, relatively larger buildings than the garage anyway, coming up close to the pavement. So I'm feeling that, uh, th that you've made a judgment here about the trees, um, the, the, the uh, forces that are reigned at a previous hearing were pushing the boarding forward. I'm feeling that it's our job to try and push it back. And uh, I guess the question would be, could we, could we push it back two feet? Um, without uh, injuring the aspirations the of the <clears throat> of the neighborhood. Well, I think, um, <clears throat> excuse me, just to just to clarify the the approximate dimensions we're talking about. So the depth of the side porch uh, is about six feet, okay. uh, maybe six and a half feet. So from the from the proposed curb to the front is about the same dimension, six or six and a half feet. So, Pardon? So you're saying it's already what I'm asking for? Well, I, I just I, I know you're asking for it to to be increased. Uh, I just wanted to be clear about what the approximate dimensions are. I, um, since there were a, a couple of avenues available to us to try to reduce the depth of the building to save the trees behind, uh, we looked at a number of things. Uh, taking all of the all of that eight feet out of the building really was not practical for a variety of reasons, and so the front porch was the, was the, the candidate on the chopping block. Uh, we are, we are uh, trying to strike that balance between uh, the distance uh, from, from the paving um, and, and saving the trees behind. We would certainly uh, uh, be open to looking at trying to inch it back a bit. Um, uh, we're, we're a little bit between a rock and a hard place here with that, in respect to that. I will say one thing that, that, that makes this really quite different from the building on, on North Pleasant Street uh, is that this is a private way. This isn't a public street. And so the, really the, the people that are uh, most often going to be either driving or walking along the street are the immediate residents. They're just a handful. So it's not quite the same as, as, as building right up to the pavement on a public street. Um, but, but having said that, I, I, I certainly understand your, your comment and your concern. Um, I, I think I, I can speak for, for Joel. 
I, I, we would be happy to look at whether or not we can push that back a little more and still save the trees at the rear. So thanks. I just want to say that um, right. the commission can look at how the building is sited in terms of the other, you know, the context of other buildings. The setback is something the zoning board is being asked to look at too. So there is, um, as Bucky pointed out, the dash line show, showing what would be a typical setback. And the zoning board is allowed to, you know, to reduce that or waive that. And so when they're going before the zoning board um, in a week or so, uh, you know, they're asking to have that be reduced so the building can, can, you know, fit on the property and then not damage the tree. So I agree as a balancing act of how do you, you know, respect the site and the neighbor's concerns and then also have the ability to uh, have this design on the site. So the commission, um, you know, to Bruce's point was, can there be some, uh, you know, how can that balance work? And so the commission can look at that. Um, but I also want to let you know that the zoning board is going to be looking at that. So the commission may say, we like the way it is now and then I'll let the zoning board know. And then they have their purview and they may have some other opinion. But for now, it's really how does this building fit on the site contextually with the other buildings? And really the setback issue is something the zoning board is gonna pick up. Thank you, do you have a question? Yeah. Uh, I have a couple of questions. Uh, one is the uh, dotted line area to the left of the four cars and to the right of existing seven P's place. Is that a wall or is that a green area? Uh, there, right there, yes. What, what does that represent, please? That, that represents a con on-site concrete walkway, um, which, is, which is existing. Uh, portions of it will likely have to be removed in order to construct the new uh, driveway, but the intention is to put uh, a concrete walkway back pretty much exactly where it is now. So that's what that represents. So that means that the existing, even though this isn't exactly in our purview, the existing lawn uh, to the left of the new building will become parking area with lawn to the rear of that. Is that your plan? So, so yes, this, uh, under the car, these four cars would be new paving that would be replacing existing lawn. Uh, beyond that, toward the back of the property, uh, all of that lawn would remain. Uh, with the, the one exception of this rain garden, uh, this would also be a, a, a pervious area. It would be new plantings, but it wouldn't be lawn per se. It's a, it's a, uh, a catchment for, for runoff. Uh, in an effort to try to keep water running from the site uh, into the backyards of the properties to the north on McClellan. We're trying to capture some of that runoff in these two rain gardens here, which are, are depressions uh, to, to try to catch that water. So it's still green, but it's not lawn. Okay. So a further question, and again, I'm stretching boundaries a bit. Uh, clearly the garage had been the garage for what is currently 7P's place. And so that's why you have those two cars to the left of 7P's. Uh, and uh, although our focus has to be on structures, uh, you know that I'm also interested in historical streetscape. And that is one lovely, beautifully uh, cared for garden at the moment, which is an amenity for the entire neighborhood. I think, you know, Mr. Greenbaum has done a beautiful job with that. I'm wondering what will remain once the parking area is built. We're not removing any gardens. All the gardens remain. That driveway is currently grass. The, the parking area. Yeah. It's grass. It's grass. Yeah, there was some grass okay. before the garden started. Well, thank you for oh. that. I can see from what you did. Yeah, it's beautiful. <laughs> okay. There are any um, further questions? Of no, I mean, so you know, the the few things I heard was that there is also a freestanding lamp, and there'll be pedestrian signs. And I wasn't sure if you had any images or anything showing those few items, and even the possible lighting on the building. Um, cause, you know, the plans we had didn't have some of those details, so I just want to make sure that the commission sees what some of those elements are. Yeah, 
That's a good question. You might have to get to the bars on the side of the screen, which are not. There you go. It's easier Sorry, to see I'm, on this I'm, screen. I'm just, uh, okay. Just having to learn the navigation. So, um, so we have three. I'm sorry, we, we have three cuts for lighting fixtures on this sheet. This fixture right here is the fixture that would be on the side of the building. It's essentially a floodlight fixture, and that would illuminate the parking area. The motion sensor. The motion sensor, yes. And that's on, on the new building? That it's will be on the west side? On the west side okay. facing the four, four new parking spaces. Okay. Uh, it, so it would it would be a motion sensor. Uh, it stays on for one minute, uh, and if it doesn't sense, uh, or, or it goes off after one minute if it doesn't sense motion. Uh, it's it's a shielded light, even though it is a floodlight, and it meets the guidelines uh, for downcast and dark sky fixtures uh, that um, that Amherst uh, has guidelines for. And then the other two fixtures, uh, they're a, 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 a copper a metal copper type fixture. This is the, six, uh, the fixture on top of the six-foot post uh, that's right between the new, uh, the new porch, entry porch, and the parking space. So there would be a six-foot, uh, this would sit atop a, a six-foot post. Uh, and then this is the fixture at the rear of the building, uh, which is a sconce, a building-mounted fixture to illuminate the area directly outside of the second means of egress, the back door of the building. Um, and let me just uh, scroll back here. So this right here is the six foot post fixture. Right, uh, right here is the motion sensor floodlight uh, with a shielded light. And right here is the building mounted sconce right beside the rear uh, exit door. Okay. Second means of egress. Yeah. Again, uh, my question may be more a zoning board question. Uh, because I was concerned about the safety of Pease Place, of two-way traffic there, now that we're adding um, a number of residents before the elbow, and you have seven Pease be going either direction, as well as the other houses that could be going other direction. I'm wondering, are you thinking about putting any kind of um, reflective mirror or something that would ease two-way, so, so the people coming in could see traffic that was headed the other direction? Because I think there is more traffic added now, and although it's a zoning board concern, I'm concerned. If it's necessary, I, I, I'm sorry, Joel. <laughs> uh, I, just, I, uh, I think I'd like to ask Bucky to address that, because he, uh, we did discuss and worked on some safety features. And Bucky, you want to talk to that? Yeah. Um, those reflective mirrors are far more effective in um, when you're pulling out into traffic and you can take a moment to stop. You're motionless. You look at a, a con, I always have to do it on my head, convex surface, which means your brain's got to like really home in on this distorted image. If you're driving and you're in motion, uh, the opportunity for you to be driving and look at a weird mirror to try and see what's coming around the corner is far more distracting than just paying attention to the corner that you're about to take. So that kind of mirror doesn't add to safety. In fact, it, it very well may detract from it. Uh, we are installing, a, as uh, Chris brought up, a, a pedestrian warning sign uh, because there will be two new residences because uh, there are currently five properties that are accessed off of this road. So we are, we are adding two new residences. I'm not sure how many residences are there now. Um, so uh, there is an increase uh, in, in the traffic uh, to a degree. Um, so we're, we're trying to keep people mindful of what's going on. And we have adjusted the pavement width as well to try and create more room than is the current condition. Uh, so we're, we're making it a little bit better in the ways that we can. Okay, thank you. So um, Nate, we're bumping up against the next agenda item. <laughs> right, so I think the, um, you know, we could, you know, Amherst Media was scheduled to uh, begin a hearing at 445, and I think we can, you know, um, the commission can, we could, you know, so we've announced that that hearing's happening. If we think we can, um, you know, wrap this up in, in five minutes, we could ask everyone to wait. If not, then we, you know, I would ask that we continue it if we think we're going to have another, you know, half an hour discussion on the, 
Yeah. Well, we haven't gotten to public um, comments. Yeah. 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 So it's up. It's up. It, you know, it's it's your call. I think we could um, ask Amherst Media to wait till you know. Um, we could say you know five you know five oh five or five ten or something, and then we'd open the hearing then if that's. Yeah. If, so yeah. I think we can if. Wait till five ten. That yeah. What you okay. think might be appropriate. Um, how many uh, people are here to um, address the seven piece place? Would like to make public comments. Oh, two of you. Okay. Um, so, if the commission, well, do you have? So. Uh, let's see. Yeah, move to close the public. Uh, well, no, we haven't had the. No, no. We, oh, I beg your yeah, yeah. Oh, we okay, haven't had the public right. meeting. Yeah. <laughs> no, I was trying to sense whether any of us had anything. I, I don't. I'm finished. I don't either. But then we don't close. Yeah, we just. So, um, should we say till? Let's keep going. Yeah, I mean, I would, keep going. We okay, we may. I mean, I would, I would, two, I would say, like, you know, we could try to say it by, you know, five or five oh five. Yeah. Two, okay. Two, so we ask you to bear with us. Um, so uh, you might want to stay. Well, yeah, I guess to make, make one. Yeah, okay. if one of you, you could go. There may be some. You may be called back for questions. Um, we'll be in the wings if okay. necessary. <laughs> Thank you, and we will. So we're going to move now to the public uh, comment portion of the second agenda item at Seven Piece Place and that we um, ask those of you who are here for the third agenda item on um, Gray Street to bear with us. Uh, we will, should wrap this up in the next 15 or 20 minutes. Okay, if you could say your name and, oh, you're here to, together, great, okay. Uh, your name and um, address in Amherst. My name is Richard Gordon. I'm uh, Nancy Gordon's son who is resident at 27 Peace Place, which is the abutting property to number seven. Okay. And, hi. <laughs> I've lived on Peace Place. So you're Nancy? Um, Can you, I'm Nancy Gordon. Okay. And I've lived on Peace Place for 60 years. C contemplate that for a minute, 60 years. The problem with Peace Place is that it is not a public road. It is a private road, and it cannot become uh, four... <laughs> Uh, uh, wide enough to become a public road. It is going to have to always be a private road. What this has meant has been, among other things, that we have always had to pay for snow removal ourselves. Uh, I have been the one who has been arranging that because I've been there for the longest time. 60 years is a long time. Uh, <clears throat> And then I asked my neighbors to contribute a, a portion that relates to the length of road that they use when they go in and out. But essentially, Pease Place is a private road. Uh, and it can never be a public road because the, what, where it comes out onto Halleck Street is not 40 feet wide. So it can never be a public road, which has to be 40 feet wide, so that the center part, which is 20 feet wide, can be a public road, which can be driven on by anybody. Uh, and then on either side, there's 10 feet on either side of the road, uh, which is used for putting signs on and other yeah, things like that. So whatever you decide to do and what, you, what has been presented here is quite different from what we've been presented with before. I assume you're going to let us have another say or something. Can um, I, um, what I need, I think, to respond to, though, is uh, your um, concerns really fall within the Zoning Board of Appeals that the Local Historic District Commission it's only within our purview, really, to Yeah, I know, except that it's been there for 60 years. Uh, excuse me. Uh, maybe I can garage. elaborate, yeah. if I could. So what I think specifically what we want to hone in on is Section 8.2 of the Historical Commission. And to quote, in the case of new construction or additions to existing buildings, the commission shall consider the scale, shape, and proportions of the building or structure both in relation to the land area upon which the building or structure is situated and in relation to the buildings or structures in the vicinity. I think there are two relevant points that I'd like to touch on. One is that because the existing garage for, I believe it's number 44, Halleck Street is non-conforming, and this uh, structure would also be essentially non-conforming, that your uh, 
this would not be appropriate use because if you think about it from a historical perspective, this private driveway was designed to accommodate very limited traffic and it's now being asked to take on a considerable additional amount of traffic. Secondarily, if you look at the other homes in the vicinity, in terms of the relationship of the size of those structures to the lots upon which they're placed, there is significantly more land mass associated with those lots and the buildings than would be the case with what Mr. Greenbaum is proposing. So I would argue that both of those would be uh, inappropriate uses relating to the surrounding structures and vicinity. Okay, thank you. Um, um, can I yeah, say yes. just a little bit more? Uh, I am the one who has erased the snow clearing on this road because this road can never be a public road. So the public cars go by on the town road. You got that? Right, yes, okay. yes, we got that. thank you. Uh, and we, uh, there are now four plus, let's put it that way, uh, houses that use us to get in and out, one of which is the house we're talking about But I have to, I'm sorry, here. you know, I, I appreciate, you know, every, your concerns and all the points that you're raising, but traffic just does not fall within we traffic doesn't fall not within the right, local fall, for whom does it fall the zoning the zoning board the zoning and the board? and the Correct, planning board right. so the zoning board would would have to look at this the this local historic district is really looking at the um you know the architecture and the massing scale and proportion of the house yeah and not necessarily the traffic or the use of it or things of that nature so it but, What's, what well, the zoning the board is is meeting next week, so that would be the appropriate. Yeah, I to, realize to that. Present but what happens to concerns. the house bears a, a relevant thing to the what happens on the roadway. Right, but our purview actually is not the roadway. roadway. Okay, it's the structure. Well, if you could it's, tell me what is who is in charge of the roadway. They've said that, Mom. It's the zoning. Okay, it would we'll be come back at, and address the zoning. Yes. Okay, yeah, and so you. Yeah, I just want to like to ask you, you. I mean, I'm assuming you've received a notice for the zoning board. Do you know? Yeah, yeah okay, we're familiar great. with the time. Make sure that they're meeting on August 22nd. Yes. yes. Okay. Uh, so we go. Is that right? I got. <laughs> um, I just want to add that we can either, as a board or as individuals, represent that concern to the zoning board of appeals. Well, okay. Yes. It just is I not inside our own mm -hmm. regulatory. Yeah. purview, but that doesn't mean we're not concerned about it. Okay. So that yeah, we could right. represent that concern to the other board yeah. on the behalf of the neighbors. Thank yeah. you very and much. And we, we would actually that. did do that after the last meeting. Mm -hmm. um, and so you see some of those changes reflected in a fewer number of parking spaces, the elbow being increased, mm -hmm. um, the parking no longer having curb parking. There's one point you might, so we, we one point heard you might all of your concerns. Which is that this, this garage that goes with the house that is at, out on Halleck Street is right close to the boundaries and you can't see, you have to turn the, in order okay. to okay. be That's a safety concern again, yeah. it's outside of there. So okay. Uh, okay. Thank but we very thank very you very much. We, we thank you, we appreciate it and again, um, if whatever this determination that this commission makes, we can still share your concerns Thank with you. the Zoning and Board of Appeal. With, so I can, then time for me to hit right connected with him. Thank you, right. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Okay, so um, are there any other public, no other public comments for this application? Yes, would you like? I'd, I'd just like to uh, address one of the concerns about uh, size and, and density, um, if, I, if I may. Um, uh, we, we, we do have a, um, uh, a plan of the neighborhood uh, that shows uh, the proposed uh, structure, which is right here. Uh, the dark outline is the, uh, is the lot of 7 P's Place. Um, the, this is the square footage of the lot here. Uh, and then the other yellow uh, shapes are the, the buildings in the neighborhood. Uh, and I'd just like to say that uh, in terms of the, the building size itself, it's a, uh, the footprint is about 1,742 feet. Um, if you look around at, at, at some of the other sizes, um, they're, 
um, really quite similar. Uh, some of them are smaller, some of them are larger. Um, the size of the lot uh, is actually quite a bit bigger. There's more open space, certainly, than many of the, uh, of the houses on, on McClellan. Uh, our contention is, is that the, the open space of the lot and the size of the building is really quite in keeping with many of the other properties in the neighborhood. Okay, thank you. That's um, very helpful information. That was you actually bet. a question I had, so thank you. So I think with that, yeah, we can um, entertain a motion to close the uh, evidentiary portion of the meeting. So moved. I can't, as the chair, I can't make the motion. No, so. I just did. did oh, you did? Second. Okay. All in favor? Yes. yes. Okay. Thank you. So we can, um, now we will deliberate amongst ourselves. Yes, do you have? Uh, I, I, for one, appreciate the changes that have been made uh, after the earlier uh, representation. I think that the scaling back and the uh, greater safety of Peace Place uh, and the, the safety of the trees in the garden in terms of the integrity of that little neighborhood, little pocket neighborhood, which is really quite beautiful, uh, is really in the spirit of the local historic district. Uh, for myself, I support what has now been proposed but I, either as an individual or want to urge the commission to make a representation to the Zoning Board of Appeals about any continued safety issues we might have about two-way traffic on what is now a one-lane driveway and how to make that safer. So I don't know whether my fellow commissioners would want to join that or whether we would just do this as individuals. I would be comfortable doing that. You know, um, we can discuss that. I think we should probably first move to actually, you know, addressing. So I think the first. Well, um, I could move to uh, remove the garage. Yes. <laughs> is that um, a second? Sorry. Or do you want to discuss the? So we can. Um, There's a motion. I didn't hear one. Yeah, Marianne just made a motion. Um, yeah. To remove the garage. That we would approve the removal of the garage. Yeah. Second. All in favor? Yes. So that's the first order of business. The garage can be removed, and then you will go before the Historical Commission. Um, so now, the construction of the proposed. Uh, so I want to separate the issue of the of the new construction from the issue of the of any concerns that we have that are outside our jurisdiction right. of the safety of please peace place. And so, speaking just to the proposed new construction, I do support that. Um, Bruce. Uh, yes, I. I agree, I do too. I, I think when we were at our last deliberation, um, I think I might have mentioned that uh, um, this is a, a way in which the town is trying to add housing um, to our, you know, to, to, the, to the town. Um, and it's a way that, generally speaking, I support. I think that uh, using the existing uh, areas and increasing density in those areas where possible and where practical is a really nice way to go. Uh, for many years our town has been uh, expanding incrementally the bylaw to support and encourage this and so this is the result and I think it's a very good result. Um, I, uh, speaking then as a commissioner, I would recognize that in supporting this project we're also supporting other aspirations of the town. I think that the changes that have been made, I understand that they've been driven by consultations with other bodies. I think this is a, an example of a successful town-wide process, and I think I congratulate the applicants too on being uh, respectful and talented in the way in which they're going about this. And despite my concern that maybe the building is too close, I think I'm, I would be inclined to frame a motion that did not address that and left that uh, in their hands um, without you know, having heard us, but I don't think there's any condition requirements. So I'm, um, I'm inclined to support uh, the proposal, uh, the application as submitted. Is that the second? Any Bruce, was that, a, was that a, was that a, was that a, was that a I think we still need a formal motion. Yeah, so I, I wasn't ready to make the motion, motion yet, right. but I, And I, I wanted will. to ask if there were any, you know, from the new commissioners, if you had any you know, questions or 
Yeah, Any Jim. particular questions? I think the changes they made from the last proposal have been positive, and I think it probably is a good idea to at least reference the zoning board again about that issue. I, I would agree. Um, I think it was, um, I really appreciate the change of reducing the number of uh, parking spaces and, and leaving the, sense. yes, and leaving the trees in the back. So, um, yeah, I would agree that it was, uh, that there were uh, two commissions bodies that had concerns and that the applicant really took those to heart and came back with, um, you know, a proposal we could live with. Yeah. So, uh, I, before I, I move, uh, right, that, yes. uh, we grant the applicant a certificate of appropriateness for the new duplex building at uh, the address Fees Place. Place. Um, uh, I'm not going to add any conditions. Uh, there may be friendly amendments to do so, and we can we can deal with, we can add to that. Um, but simply re registering that the findings uh, that the proposed structure meets the review criteria found in 8.2 and 8.8 .8 of the Amherst Local Historic Bylaw, uh, that the building has been designed to blend with the overall appearance of the district and that the architectural design features and scale of the structure will be in harmony with the existing properties and no negative impact to the district that will be occurring. Uh, a second? Before I second, I just want to ask if we can then have either a motion or a consensus to write as a group to the Zoning Board of Appeals about the safety issue, that well, we've separated separate, those right? issues. Yes, yeah, separate. so we're separating a, those a, issues. Yeah, there's a motion yes. that needs to have seconded, be seconded, sure. or if you know it fails, we have to have another motion. Okay. So if we support the motion Bruce made to issue a certificate at Seven Peace Place with no conditions, finding that you know the structure meets the review criteria and the building's designed to blend in and that you know um, there's no negative impacts, then you know, we need a second on that motion before we discuss anything else. But, but that would not rule out the making no. another motion? No, no, it okay. doesn't right now. Okay, well in that case I second it. Okay, uh, all in favor? Well, before you do right. a question, right. yeah. I did not put the condition I did not add the condition that the uh, uh, changes made by the zoning board shall be reviewed um, because I thought that that would be an automatic uh, requirement. It, it is, is an auto true? It is an automatic. So, right, but we you can know, if, support that. So, you know, outside this motion is yeah. that if the zoning board requires a change that you need to then change the site plan or the building, it have to come back to the local historic district. So it's it's you know, implicit in in the in the process. Right. So if the zoning board says, you know, we we want to see a front porch on there, or you have to move the building back 10 feet and do something that changes this, then it has to come back here. And we would work with the applicant on that. If okay, yeah. so okay. that's why that's not there. Yeah, right. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I'm ready. All in favor? We ready to vote? Yes, so it's uh, unanimous. Um, so we approve the application. Uh, thank you. And uh, would I would be in favor of, um, I guess, framing a letter or it can, be a, it can be just a, just a simple memo, memo yeah, to the zoning to the board. Zoning board yes. saying that we would like them to take the abutters concerns in terms of traffic uh, into consideration. Yeah. I'd simply like to add that we share the concerns. Is, uh, yes. That we can do that. I mean, that we, we have heard the abutters concerns, we share the concerns, and uh, it, it'll be to the, the owner and the ZBA to figure out how to meet right. those safety concerns. But that we are proposing the, the structure as it's been, the new house as it's been proposed and situated on the property. If someone wants to make a motion or if we want to have, just have an agreement by consensus on that. I think okay. consensus. consensus. Sure. Yeah, I think we could do that by consensus. Yes, yeah, as we did last time. Okay. I'm comfortable. Yeah, okay, thank you. And we appreciate um, those of you who are here for the next agenda item for being so patient. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, okay. and thank Thanks. you for your time. Yeah, thank you for your presentation and flexibility. Yeah, I was going to do that. Should we do introductions again since? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so um, the, the meeting did officially uh, was called to order at 4 o'clock, but since so many of you came in for the um, Gray Street uh, application, 
uh, and we have new, um, we have three new commission, well, four new, I think, since, since we last met, four new commissioners that we would just like to take a moment and introduce ourselves. Again, I'm Jennifer Taub, and um, I'm a resident of the North Prospect Lincoln Sunset Local Historic District neighborhood. And we'll maybe start. Uh, can you press your button? Yeah. <laughs> Greta Wilcox, also a resident of uh, Morianne Adams, I'm a resident of the Lincoln Prospect, and I just want to say, looking at the clock, that I'm going to have to slip out at 6 o'clock, and it, it won't, I hope it, nobody takes offense if I do so, if the discussion runs on. Uh, Bruce Coldham, I'm uh, the architect that the, uh, the, 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 the require, there's a requirement to have an architect on the committee, and I'm here. I'm Karen Winter. I'm also a resident of the Lincoln Prospect uh, Historical District. Jim Lumley from a uh, real estate uh, appointee. Thank you. So I just want to say quickly, I'm Nate Malloy. I'm staff liaison to the commission. And I'm going to be passing around a sign-in sheet. I'd just like for everyone to sign it. You don't have to provide anything other than your name, but it's nice to have a record of who's here. Thanks. Um, and I would like, so the way the, uh, you know, the meeting will proceed is uh, we will invite the applicant to make um, a presentation. And um, I think that will be Bill Gillen will be, uh, the ar architect on the project will be presenting for Amherst Media Company. Um, and then members of the commission will have the opportunity to ask questions of the applicant. Um, and then we will open it up to public comment. And um, can I just ask by show of hands about how many people would, came here to, to make public comment? Would like to be called to speak? Okay. So in the, um, I just kind of want to put this out there, uh, that we will be um, looking to wrap up the, this meeting um, at 6.30. So we will not actually be closing the meeting today, and um, we will not be, we will not be closing the hearing. And so the commission will not actually be voting to approve or disapprove um, the certificate of appropriateness today, that in the interest of time, and we you know certainly want to give this, we want everyone to have a chance who wants to speak to speak, um, and we want to give this the full you know due diligence that this important project deserves. So we will keep the hearing open and continue it at our next regularly scheduled meeting um, on September 9th. So we usually meet on the second Monday of the month. And there's, if for some reason, you know, somebody can't be at that meeting, uh, again, you should have an opportunity to speak today, but you can always, you know, submit comments to the commission, which will be part of our permanent record. So I just wanted to, if that even eases some of the tension of what's gonna happen today, that we will not be um, making a determination at this meeting. Okay, and with that, um, I would like to, uh, I guess, invite Bill Gillen, and, okay, or Amherst Media to um, make its presentation. Thank you, and if you, yeah, of course, introduce yourself, yeah. Yeah, you just have press There I am, I'm good. Hi. Uh, good evening. Uh, I, my name is Jim Lesko. I'm the executive director of Amherst Community Television, Inc commonly referred to doing business as Amherst Media. We are the proud owners of this parcel of land on Gray and uh, Main Street. That's before you tonight. We are back before you having been here in March when we were denied a certificate of appropriateness. Before I continue and introduce the next speakers, I'd like to very briefly address a concern that many people in the community have voiced about the appearance of the property in question, mainly the lack of mowing. And this is very quick, so please bear with me. I have two words to explain our decision. Ecological restoration. This is a process of assisting recovery of our ecosystem that has been degraded, damaged, or destroyed. The native plants that grew are naturally adapted to the climate, soils, and pollinators of the area. To establish, they required no fertilizers and little to no watering. In our case, the current water encroachment, which is still awaiting remediation, assisted this non-cutting mowing approach by helping to absorb the abundancy of water 
spilling onto the pedestrian walkway while aiding the critically needed pollinators. This was Amherst Media's attempt to utilize the open land for the good of our environment for all before we constructed our new facility. In our March hearing, we listened to the expressed concerns of this committee and residents and went forward to address the issues cited. To assist us, we reached out to area architects and selected one who we felt knew the historic district area intimately, so much so his firm is in a butter. It is our pleasure to introduce Bill Gillen of Gillen Collaborative Architects, who will present our revised plans for you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Bill Gillen, and with me is my colleague, John Krifka. We're the collaborative. <clears throat> I'd like to have the first slide to be our model and this is the way we started the project. Uh, the discussion at, the, at your last meeting regarding this project seemed to fo focused on where the building was situated and whether or not it was uh, compatible with the architecture of the surroundings. So to be sure people understood, we made this model and the building that has the two cars in a parking lot in the upper right <clears throat> is the building that's proposed. We uh, have invited the neighbors and uh, for over three successive nights to come to our office and give us their comments. We also had a meeting at the Amherst Media office and did the same. It was a lot of fun. They were um, very few, uh, the only Negative comment I heard was that I should cut the grass, which I did the night before last <clears throat> with my tractor. <clears throat> uh, we have not completed or even begun construction documents. It's appropriate for us to come to you and be sure that we've got the right shape building in the right place and the parking lot hidden behind it and before we want, my clients want to invest in the detailed drawings. Similarly, we haven't, Bucky, is Bucky still here? Bucky has not uh, done the engineering to totally engineer the water drainage issue, but he's met with the Public Works Commissioner and they uh, have, uh, he was given a good sense that there would be no problem or he, it can be done, the, uh, and which was a major issue at your last uh, meeting. Uh, let me uh, now, now go to the next plan, the next floor plan, yeah. Building consists, consists basically of two wings, the east wing and the west wing. The east wing is our, off our offices, and the left wing are the studios and uh, the things associated with production. Uh, in the center is an exhibition entry area, all glass, which has two vestibules one on the south side there and one on the north side. Pursuant to a meeting we had yesterday with the building commissioner, Robert Mora, and Nate, it was uh, suggested that we might put a, f a door where the arrow is right now, <clears throat> a front door there, and uh, I realized that would be no problem. It would be great to do. Uh, I had somehow got hung up with the idea that I had to have vestibules and really that door is a rather ceremonial thing. People are gonna come from the other side. The door faces south. <clears throat> and so I think that to make it uh, more compatible and look like it, it's the front of the building, which Nate suggested that it didn't look like. We, <laughs> we think that's a great idea and we'd like to explore that. <clears throat> uh, the building is about 4,000 square feet. 
it's all one story. It's one story in a two-story neighborhood. So uh, we didn't, we, we were glad to have the excuse to put a, a, an attic over the right side and an attic over the left, left wing. Uh, the attic over the uh, west wing includes a room to have the very high studio. Was it 14 feet? Yeah. 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 It's a 14 foot high studio. So that's good, it pushed the roof up so that it would look m more like a two-story building. And on the right side, we'll have an attic for mechanical equipment. There's no basement, so the rest of it is storage. Uh, the, the, another major feature of the, the plan is that the street elevation, the sidewalk elevation at the main entrance right there that is the main entrance, and within a few inches of that is the finished floor level throughout. And then you go on through that and go out to the parking lot at that point, it's also the elevation there. So there's no need for any ramps. So that was a, a major, for me, very important. Secondly, to hide the cars behind the building. Uh, and to move the building over to corner of Gray Street, which, uh, which uh, then gave the complete view from Main Street of, of uh, the big lawn. <clears throat> uh, maybe we should go to the elevations. You just want to look at the site plan first? Okay, site plan, Circuit. yeah. Uh, site plan shows the uh, 15 car parking lot, which includes uh, an accessible lot. And up in the left hand corner, upper left corner is a utility yard where there will be no dumpsters, but there are uh, uh, compressors for the AC system and a tank for the gas system, of course you can't use gas that's in the ground anymore, you have to put propane in. <clears throat> uh, around, the, uh, around the lot, there is a low retaining wall. That's to take into account the fact that the lot stays, stays down on the main, uh, it's not a slope parking lot. Uh, and the, and the uh, retaining wall will vary depending on the slope on the other side, anywhere from two feet to four feet in height. The purpose of the, uh, re the fence above the retaining wall, <clears throat> which I didn't realize till meeting yesterday with Robert Moore, was not to keep people from seeing the parking lot, which I always thought it was. It isn't, it's to keep the lights from the car from hitting my neighbor's uh, house, which I think is a great idea. <clears throat> we also uh, don't show any lighting because uh, we intend to put the lighting in that wall no, with no uh, poles required using LED lighting and put it in the overhang of the uh, entry uh, porch so that there's, a, so there will be no need for any pole lighting which would uh, get in people's eyes or, or get into the, the neighbors. Right, so am I done with that one, John? Yeah. Uh, I think we're, the advantageous location of the parking, in addition to the community probably wanting early on the building in the uh, southeast corner of the site and also possibly parking behind it, is Gray Street slopes up as in this direction to the north. We've taken advantage of the actual pitch of the land at this point. Uh, we're required to have no more than a 5% slope once we leave the driveway for the cars in both directions. And we have that without a lot of earth movement. Uh, it also allows us entry into the uh, the main portion of the building, the receiving hall here, uh, at the same elevation as 
most of the parking and uh, it gets a little higher at the uh, enclosure back here. Um, Let me add about that, uh, the structure over at the corner. This here? Uh, the, oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, we had a structure there because Bucky thought that he might right. need it as a place to bury another tank associated with drainage. But Bucky said the other day that he does he won't need that. So we're gonna be removing uh, that plant, what we thought was a planting bed, who actually was a, a buried tank, but we'll have neither there. <clears throat> so the, the building east wall, it would be here. This would be all lawn and landscaped area in the front now. We have a planting plan that too. The uh, elevations, uh, you can see that where the cursor is now, that brick wall won't be there. <clears throat> this is the elevation that you see from Gray Street. Uh, there's a, a canopy over the sidewalk, uh, mostly because I was concerned with uh, snow slides because the sidewalk is up against the building. And that's where the lighting would be underneath there. And on the upper right side there is the, uh, the fence and the, uh, and the fence would may be made to match the building. So if the building is white wood clabbered, the fence would be white wood clabbered, faced on both sides. <clears throat> now, before we leave that, the outline that's shown here is the actual grade on the other side of the, uh, the fence. And when we get to the next, when we get to this elevation, you can see we're down, this is the west elevation. So our floor elevation is the same throughout at 267. And when you're standing uh, looking to the east from Triangle Street, our existing building floor is going to be below grade. This represents the backside of what we just saw in the earlier slide elevation of the east. And this is, this is the line of the parking down here below. This is the retaining wall here running east-west. And this further over here is the first property on Gray Street. Yeah, OK. <clears throat> we need a new elevation, John. Uh, this, this is facing uh, Main Street, and uh, you can see why it looks like it'd be a good idea to put the front door in the link between the two buildings. <clears throat> There'd be a sign, Amherst Media, we'd like that to be backlit so that there's uh, no lights on the ground that are lighting that. <clears throat> there's uh, windows for the offices on the right-hand side. And there are then, the other side is the business part of the, of the business here, and there are computer rooms and studios, uh, as well as the grade uh, down, so that we can't put windows going down to the ground, looking like a residential. So it, it's meant to be, to look different from the residential side of it. It is a, um, a building that is commercial, it's in a commercial zone, and here we are trying to marry the residential Gray Street idiom with the commercial Main Street idiom, which I own across the street. <clears throat> this will look better than mine. So let's go to the next one. <clears throat> this is, if you're in the parking lot, uh, this is what you'd be um, looking at the double doors over there, go into the uh, big studio. This, uh, before we leave the mention of studio, the studio is tucked into this uh, northwest corner here, and it requires a full 14-foot clear height. Uh, here you could see when we're on this side of the building, on the north side, we're pretty much at floor grade. So it represents, up to this point, pretty much up to here, what is the interior of the uh, working studio. 
And from here to here, it's pretty much the width. We could go back to the plan and show the area of it. Um, a lot of that predicates, in addition to the neighbor and in neighborhood, in addition to the style, it, it predicates this possibly being a one and a half story building element, even though it's a one story building. Um, maybe the other option is to break out the studio as a separate, yet again, a separate element and make it busier, but we didn't feel that was necessary. And down here on the back side, this is again the office function, the in-house office function. And right here are utility spaces that are toilet rooms and their storage of equipment that gets rental. Uh, and uh, again, not wanting to mimic uh, area windows that now exist, but wanting to pick up maybe the, the definition of what is across the street at the Lumberyard restaurant where there are these kind of bandings of, of, of horizontal spaces and maybe putting in what might be a more uh, rural type of window, which again is reflected on the front because we have to get high enough so that those front windows over here on this side are more clear story because the computer activity does not want bright daylight inside that room. Um, also, we that shows also the the planting bed on the left that yeah, will will be gone. Will be gone. We expect that uh, that we would come back, not because your agenda is crowded, but because right. the, 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 right. it's, it's reasonable. It's as right. as Bruce mentioned last time, you shouldn't come here with, in my opinion, and I'm thinking should be yours, with completed drawings where we can show you exactly what windows we're going to use. Yeah. That, that, we'll know that next time in a month, but if we get the uh, encouragement to proceed, right, we and otherwise we're going to just stop and I don't know what we'll do. But <laughs> okay. So no, we uh, appreciate that. That makes sense. Our, our path. Okay. Uh, before we leave, the, the lighting we talked about, Bill talked about, would be uh, embedded inside the uh, retaining mm -hmm. wall that's running. Uh, that separates the property from the Gray Street house that's running uh, east-west. And then on the opposite side, there would be lights under the canopy that uh, is here. This would be lit below. And then opposite where the retaining wall is, there would be lighting for, the, uh, for that side of the parking lot. So there'll be what we call tweaks. There'll be mutations because nothing stands still and as we go through and we'd be happy, love it to come back and get some more encouragement from you. Okay. Before we leave the model, the, the map pins, which maybe you can, are a little hard to see here, designate the entire property. Right. Uh, so here is 401 Main Street across the street. And here is the commercial properties with Elements Hot Tubs and, and what was the Lumberyard restaurant. So uh, the area well in front of the historic houses up the hill remains open. Right. Um, there might be discussion about whether it's open enough. That's something we could easily discuss. And those <laughs> trees where the cursor is, <laughs> yeah, exist there exist. now. That's, that's the line of them. Those trees are there now. Yeah. 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 Okay. And right now there's a, there's a neighbor fence that runs, yes. a wooden right. fence that runs down here. Just to clarify, can you say the existing fence, right, you just mentioned, John, is that at the same location where the retaining wall will be located or will the retaining wall actually be pushed into the hillside? Well, here is the, the existing fence and the retaining wall seem to overlap here. Yes, yeah, so it'll be at the same location. And there seems to be discussion between both both Where the property line is. About what's going to be done with that. Okay. Because there might be... Uh, there might be an incursion on, on the new owner's property. Uh, but you can see the new owner has built, the, the, the property steps up here, there's a, a stone retaining wall, there's a shed, then there's the wooden fence here. So this isn't all that easy to solve right now without negotiating between 
both property owners, I believe. Okay. Um, gotcha. Also, what we what we plan to do with the water issues is uh, uh, Bucky Sparkle is pretty convinced that we can put two tanks below the parking area here, underground, to handle all the water runoff. This would be a shelf, hopefully a shelf that gets built up, starting with the elevation 270 here, and it continues up to 278 here, but he needs a certain elevation here to handle the runoff of the roof water. And we don't want to put any aqueduct or pipe or anything. There's not going to be any hump there. It's going to be a shelf. It, yeah. But we'll show you that. It appears as a hump right now, but most likely we can work the grade so it's a shelf that continues up with the natural slope. Not most likely. It will be. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so. Planning plan. Okay. So, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Thank you. Okay. Um, okay. Okay, thank you very much. We really uh, appreciate that. Do you want us to stay sitting here? Or? Uh, um, yes, yeah, I guess we'll have some questions. Um, ask for some clarification. Uh, we appreciate that, you know, detailed presentation. And as Marianne said to the last applicant who went a bit back to the drawing board, that we, uh, the commission does really appreciate your hearing all our, you know, suggestions and concerns last time and taking you know, speaking many of them of, into account. Speaking of hearing, I got to tell you that if you're sitting in the audience, yeah. you can't hear. You it, can't it's, hear? It's very woofy and fluffy. Oh, uh, sorry. And especially if you're in the e back. Even with the microphones. Can you hear me now? Oh, I can hear you. No, but, but can they hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah. So we, we, I just expressed our appreciation for <laughs> the applicant having taken um, the commission's uh, comments and concerns from last time into consideration and, you know, bringing back plans that incorporate those. We appreciate that. Um, yeah. Uh, so now the, you know, commissioners will um, ask questions of the applicants. So should I, I can go through my staff report. Yeah, do you want to go through the want? staff report first? I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, Nate will go through the staff report first. My apologies. So the, um, you know, there's a development application report. There's copies in the back table. The, uh, you know, it, it goes through the different criteria of the bylaw. You know, first and foremost, there was the you know the the existing you know lawn is important. It's part of the historic view shed and landscape of the Hills Mansions, and so you know I just want to make sure that that's you know recognized. The um, that the front lawn you know for of this property you know and you know for the Hills Mansions and the Women's Club, it's this this was all part of the historic landscape, and so the the view shed and the treatment of the landscape is important. So. You know, one of my notes was what's happening with that mound, and that's something the commission can 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 rule on. So, you know, the question is, if there's infrastructure there, is there a way to use it to minimize any impact to that that view shed? The um, you know, in terms of the architecture, you know, it there's a balancing act of how the structure can relate to Gray Street, which is more residential, and then Main Street, which is more commercial. And so, in my report, you know, I I note that the the these two buildings they're talking about in the central atrium doesn't have a nice treatment along Main Street. So the, the appearance of the structure right now is not similar to other structures along Main Street or the streets. And so I included images of the different you know, properties up, up, up and down Main Street and on Gray Street and Triangle Street in the application to look at. You know, the size of the building isn't um, an issue in terms of the square foot. So you know, they're trying to break down the mass by having a single story building I think you know the commission can really look at what's the proportions of the building, the siting of the building on the on the site, do the roof lines, the w window shape and size and pattern. All those things to me need to be examined in terms of are they compatible and similar to the district. I had a number of design points on the last page. Um, you know, I also recommended that there could be uh, an alternative design that's presented as part of this process. So Bill said he's willing to have tweaks and changes and so you know if the commission has enough questions the hearing can stay open and there can be modifications made to the design submitted and so i think that's something that uh is reasonable so for for, for me for the commission to make a decision i recommend that we need to know the exact height of the retaining walls you know the planting bed in the southeast corner has said that's going to be removed there was a sign on that corner so you know is the lettering on that sign going to be placed somewhere else on the building Again, the we'll give this to you in writing. Yeah, the facade treatment along Main Street, you know, is very important. So how, how does that work in terms of the relationship of the neighborhood? 
um, you know, the window patterns can seem a little odd with different size shapes. So there's square windows and then there's double hung windows. And so, you know, that's something the commission needs to look at. Is the placement and pattern and size of windows uh, similar and compatible to the style in the, in the district? The, you know, there's the large roof on the western mass. So it's a, it's a, the proportion is a square piece. And so the roof is quite high. So although it's one and a half stories, it's 32 feet high. And so the ridge line is quite high in that building. And so again, that's something the commission, you know, needs to look at in terms of is that slope and pitch and proportion in keeping with the rest of it. So although the gable end faces Main Street, is that proportionality and the slope and pitch appropriate? Again, the entry on Main Street, I think, can be revised. There needs to be more information on all the details. So what's happening with the window trim, the doors, uh, the fascia, the pediment treatment, you know, those are all details that people will notice that aren't really shown on these renderings, and Bill admitted that. So although we're not necessarily asking for construction drawings, you know, I would like to see whether it's catalog cut sheets or something explaining the detail. So, you know, on the last one on Peace Place, we asked about what's the width of the corner boards? I mean, all those things are the visual treatment of the building, and that's important. That isn't, you know, they may be shown in the renderings, but it's not. For me, the commission can't make a decision based on that. They would have to have detail enough to say that, you know, they're approving a plan showing this type of corner board or this type of treatment. Um, so it sounds like, you know, they've, they've addressed the outside lighting and railings. It seems like there's minimal exterior features. I just want to make sure that if there's any other signs or lighting that the commission, you know, gets to be made aware of it. So any, anything, you know, I don't want the applicant to come back again or have to go through the process and say, oh yeah, by the way, we're having an entry gate to the parking lot. And so, you know, if, as long as we're satisfied that there's nothing being added. Um, you know, the drainage infrastructure was really important last time. So again, that's something the commission, if there is infrastructure that's visible, it can be regulated. And so it sounds like it's all going to be buried. If that can be confirmed, that's great. Um, you know, again, the, the assess the view shed, the impact of the structure. So you know, we had a site visit today. So how, how is the siting of the house, um, how does that work within the view shed of the, of the district in the context of it? You know, the entry doors are really important. The ones on Main Street are important. And the ones facing Gray Street in the parking lot are important. So in the renderings, you know, it says that they look more like back doors and not front entryways. So if you looked at the homes along Gray Street, they have a nice treatment of front entries in terms of whether it's panel doors or side lights or window treatment. And the doors in the renderings look like slab doors with not a lot of ornamentation. So that's something the commission can look at. Um, I think, you know, I think that's about it. Uh, I think there's a lot to consider as a new structure, new building, new site. So. Um, you know, and I'd like to encourage the public, as uh, Jennifer said, if the hearing will be continued. If you have questions or comments, feel free to email or call me. Uh, I'm available, and you know, everything can be run through Bill or through myself. But you know, if you want to send something in writing or call me, feel free to do so, and then it can get into the record. Um, and that way, it can also be read um, at the next hearing if someone can't attend. So that'd be great. Sure. Sure. Uh, that's really, I guess that's a call for you. Usually we'd ask that the, you know, commission ask questions. Um, I'm not, what's the, the time is, it's quarter to six. So it's really, it's really a, you know, how the commission if, would like to. Yeah. Well, so, um, but we'll do, we'll do is. Yeah, is we'll, we can have more questions, but I just throw this out to the, to the rest of the commissioners. If we try and keep our questions for the, till six o'clock so that we can be sure that um, members of the public that are here that we don't want to get to 6.30 or 6.15 before you've had a chance to um, sh uh, deliver your comments. So, yeah. Yeah so, 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 yeah, so then my recommendation might be then, um, John and Bill, is that you know the commission can ask questions and we'll take note of them, but I wouldn't expect an answer tonight. We, at least we can get those aired right, and when it comes back, they can be answered. That's we'll, sure. okay. That, Um, I have comments and questions. Uh, first, uh, I really appreciate your having moved the building to the corner. It makes a huge difference because it opens up the sight lines to the two hills houses in what is a very 
sensitive historical area. Uh, so I really do appreciate that, and I'm thrilled that Bucky and the engineer feel they can solve the drainage problem there, and that you've put the parking to the north uh, along Gray Street. It's, I really wanted to acknowledge that that's a major change, and that architecturally this is a major change that really does, at least in my view, fit the area in a way that the earlier one didn't. Uh, so I'm, I'm very appreciative. I'm also very glad you're using white clabbered, red brick, gray shingle roof, because that's really what you see on Gray Street. And when you cross the railroad tracks and kind of head east on Main Street, you see, although professional buildings, they're still in that farmhouse uh, colonial revival style. So I appreciate that. So I'm just going to report my questions, and you'll take note of them, and then we'll talk about them another time. Uh, I really feel that the, I, I, I wish there were some way to make the two roof lines symmetrical. Uh, the one looks to me like a gable with a pent, with a kind of little window in it, which really does fit the gray street architecture whereas the hip roof is, if that is the correct term, is really very large, very dark, and very massive. And the two, to me, do not look as if they belong to the same building. I think that my own preference would be to veer toward the vernacular residential style rather than to veer toward the business style, which in that particular neighborhood is not as attractive as it might be in other neighborhoods. So um, that's just one thought. A second kind of thought or question uh, is to really urge a significant Main Street entry. Uh, the bus runs along there, and so people won't be just coming in from the parking area. They'll be walking, uh, you know, they'll be walking east from downtown. Uh, they'll be coming off the bus. And uh, it's a rather forbidding, uninviting exterior at the moment. So I would urge not just kind of slipping a doorway in there, but really making an inviting looking uh, entrance It's as a question. Uh, the mound uh, may very well interrupt the watershed. I think you're saying it won't be a mound, Mr. Gillen, but uh, we'll hear more about that, I'm sure, when you come back. Uh, I was concerned about the retaining wall to the north. I uh, hear you saying that that's an negoti ongoing negotiation with neighbors, and I can appreciate the difficulty there. Uh, because when we looked at the fence, we really weren't sure what was on whose property. Uh, there is the issue of bicycle racks, because people will be biking in as well. Maybe you'll be putting them in the parking lot, but uh, th that's an issue. Um, and that's it for me. Uh, I, I appreciate the comment about the entrance. That was one of the first things that struck me is that there's such majestic entrances on the other, uh, the two houses that exist. You want something that catches that sense of place. So that would, that would be, one thought, so, and, and the, uh, well, the doorway addressed that. Uh, more windows, I mean, the windows look, look sort of like, almost like an afterthought. Uh, and, uh, just to be more inviting to, to a public eye, even. Uh, just one com quick comment. Uh, actually, our intention was the existing uh, owner now has a carter in their building on College Street where they display art and it's intended to be, uh -huh. you know, a, a, a place to be for the public. Uh, our intention, although the, maybe it's the fault of the drawing, I think more than anything else, our intention is that this link in between would let in a lot of light and air, <laughs> and that central space would also accommodate things like on Thursdays, art walk and special uh -huh. shows and things I see. like that, rather than have the corridor somewhere through the building that you had to find. So you're absolutely right. I mean, it, I think the drawing does not represent well okay. what our intention was okay. meant to be. 
Yeah, he's talking about the design. <laughs> we'll, we'll make, we'll fix that, and we'll make a major. And one, one other entrance. comment is two. Oh, okay. <clears throat> Relying on two large propane tanks. I live in the neighborhood. The thought of two large propane tanks right there is a little bit uh, overwhelming, actually. Uh, the propane tank isn't bigger than this table, and it's uh, something that you have to do these days because you're not allowed to use the uh, gas in the street. There's no hooking into the gas no. line? On, no. On, uh, kind of now, maybe in triangle? 20 years or so, but there's it's none. Because there was, there was a lot of work done on Triangle Street a few years back when gas came into the neighborhood. But I, I'm assuming you've It's checked. a whole regional thing. The gas I company see. has shut us off from oh, any okay. new connections, oh, okay. period. Okay. I, I would have thought that yeah. something like this might have been exempt, that that would have been for private residences. I, I know that it's been shut off. Um, everything, everything. Everything, okay. Can it be screened? So well, of course yeah. you won't, we won't see it. It'd be that's why we have the fence around the, okay. yeah. <clears throat> the yeah. a lot. Okay. Those were my main concerns. Um, Thank you. I'll be quick. I guess we've got seven minutes. Yeah. <laughs> so um, a couple of things. Uh, um, I think probably the best thing to start with is the we made four suggestions, and I'm talking to my colleagues as much as to and uh, as everybody else. And it seems that three of those suggestions have been taken care of completely, and one of them perhaps more completely. Number three, and I'll read it, an alternative building, these were recommendations we made at our last meeting, I mean the last meeting that we met with Amos Media. An alternative building design should be examined with forms that reflect its position between the urban context on the south side of Main Street and the pastoral historic setting on the north side. Um, you've gone with the, uh, the north side, with the, uh, the residential um, um, field, the residential image, the residential... Well, not in my, not in my, my in intention. Well, I'm not saying this is bad. I'm just, I'm just observing that that's what I see here. Okay. And uh, I didn't want to go to residential for the business part of the building. I wanted that to not look like a residence, which is why I didn't put residential windows looking into the studios. I guess it's the big pediment and the and the the, the residential forms of pitched roofs and things like that. It's that, uh, um, and. Uh, some of the observations that uh, staff have made that Nate uh, reported um, talk about scale and so forth. And when I look at the, uh, at the building, uh, the, the pediment, because you've made a two-story, uh, uh, basically it's a one-story building, and we understand that from last time, why that is, and uh, which is why I thought that we could make the building shorter. And in fact, in some respects, it looks it's too short uh, because the, uh, the pediment is overwhelming what's underneath it. And so I'm thinking, how can you make that less of a, of a crushing uh, appearance? So the, the pediment is big, not, all, not uh, on, the, uh, on the west side uh, yeah. uh, we, piece. We, we have a, a concept which we discussed yesterday with Nate of, of making that building, that section a little narrower and putting some of the things that are in it in the other side. So uh, so it could be squeezed. It will be a little, maybe five or six feet narrower. Anyway, if we'll uh, without trying to solve the problem, just that's my observation that would make me uh, uh, more supportive. I'm generally supportive. I, I, I respect the huge difference, uh, the huge, huge distance, I should say, that's been traveled since we last saw uh, you. Um, some details, uh, I, and they're not drawn yet, but so I'll just say what I think. Um, I think that that uh, pediment would probably look better if it were uh, what I guess I call an ashlar, a, a flat, not uh, clabbered, uh, but a flat. Uh, we had the same conversation actually with the Peace Place uh, folk, and the, these pediments tend to be uh, uh, smooth surface and not, uh, not clabbered. I think it would be better too if we keep that to have a, a, a big uh, freeze board down there so that you're diminishing the, basically um, make, make articulating the pediment. Your, your photograph that you show has that. Um, mm -hmm. I can't put my finger on. 
this piece here, this freeze piece here, I think if that were 10 uh -huh. inches or a foot, uh, a foot, it would be big and it would tend uh -huh. to mm -hmm. make the, the pediment look less brutal, I think. The yeah. uh, clapboards, I think the clapboards for, uh, the clapboards, I beg your pardon, the corner boards could be really wide. I mean, you could even make double wide. I mean, sometimes you see these, uh, you've got two 10-inch uh, corner boards separated by two inches, and it, that, will, that will compress the uh, elevation as well. All those kind of things seem to be uh, things that could be done that would, from my point of view, make it uh, uh, more appealing. Um, and I think that it might be helpful for this group and probably everybody if you can make a, th a 3D visual because what we're looking at are these uh, elevations and we're not seeing it as a mass or a, a volume. And um, I know from my time when we first started getting electronic digital stuff and you could fly people around three-dimensional models, I think that will diminish the apparent impact of the scale of all of what I've been talking about and make it easier for us to perhaps appreciate how these things work together. That's probably enough for me for now. Thank you. And thank you. So um, people know there is this, the model is actually there if, if people want to. Just quickly, I mean, to Bruce's point, I think a yeah. 3D model, you know, it's more than a massing model, right. is really right. helpful so that we can, I, I agree. Uh, you know, these renderings are flat, so when you look at, you know, like for instance, the elevation from Gray Street, you see a big roof behind it, but if you see a 3D model of it, it helps provide the context and depth that isn't shown in these elevations. Um, it's a, that is a nice comment. Okay, thank you. Uh, any other comments? Jim? Just think there's so many significant good changes. Oh yeah, if you could uh, press your, that's it, to the microphone, yeah. Thank you. Many excellent changes made from the uh, previous proposal, and uh, I like the idea that it, from Gray Street, it looks like the uh, front of a house as, as the gable end of the house, as well as from Main Street. It's a very large gable, but somehow but, uh, at least it is in a commercial uh, motel um, and. Uh, I guess I agree with many of the comments that have, other people have already made that I had made some notes on. And also, please do, when you come back, keep in touch with pay, the items on page four of the uh, staff report. proposal yeah. that most of us yeah. have, have gone over. And uh, thanks. That's all. Yeah. Thank you. Karen? Uh, I, yeah. I understand you're balancing the commercial and the residential, and I, I really like the way it looks from Gray Street, but the difficulty of that all is you don't want it visually to look like a commercial thing is hanging on the side of a residential thing. And aesthetically, that's, that's the difficulty. So basically, I'm very pleased with where you're putting it and the whole idea. I'm sure you're going to come up with a great solution. What, we, what I thought of was that the very, very traditional relationship between the little house and the barn. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that the windows look like stalls. And I thought that was fun. fun. Huh. Now, could the atrium be, would, would that do anything if the atrium was wider? You had more of the glass. It, it, it might, as Bruce was saying, if if the west gable, would, that whole section were shorter, mm -hmm. maybe some of the plan building went into the middle atrium. Right. You know, it would seem to get, it wouldn't be a squat. Part of the problem too is that on the other side, um, I should talk into the mic, I guess. Mm -hmm. On the other side. You know, it's not a squat because you're down here at grade where the floor is. But when you go back to, to this side, you're going uphill <laughs> and you lose the height of what right. was on the other side. Right. Um, you know, but maybe if the dimension were from here to maybe only here, you know, and it became sort of a different, same form, but different proportions, right. it might be more presentable 
uh, as well as maybe doing something with, by bringing this glass around into this point, maybe introducing some more brick like across the street. Yeah. I mean, we had thought about all those things, trying to marry the commercial okay. too. Yeah. I appreciate all that. Um, it still feels to me as if the hip roof and the roof over the atrium feel very massive and heavy. And uh, I hope you can do something to lighten it. We're going to solve that. OK. Thank you. So um, I think with uh, that, we will um, conclude our questions for now and um, turn to the you know, uh, public comment portion of the meeting. And do you have to? I, I, can, I can stay another 10 minutes. Oh, great. Minutes OK. Terrific. Um, OK, so we could. Um, ask you, thank you, and return to your seats, because we'll let members of the public will come. But thank you very much for that thorough, thoughtful presentation. Um, so I guess by show of hands of who, um, is it, and we'll you know, try and get to as many of you as we can tonight. So maybe I'll just start right with you, the first. If you could um, come up and uh, you know, tell us your name and if you're a resident, your address in Amherst. Sure, my name is Felicity Hardy. I am a resident of Amherst. I live at 574 Station Road, but I'm actually here in my capacity uh, as um, counsel to the owners of Henry Hills House, which oh, okay. is Harmsway LLC. Yeah. Um, Tony uh, Brackett and Robert Spicer, who are also here, and they will also have some additional comments. Okay. Um, I wanted to um, identify some questions for the commission uh, that maybe you could uh, put to the applicant because uh, obviously there are a lot of details that we don't have um, information about um, and uh, the commission has raised some of those but I wanted to um, re-articulate some of those. Um, I also wanted to um, provide some feedback about the facade specifically from Main Street. And then finally, I want to bring to the Commission's attention some problems with the site plan, which probably will also be dealt with by the uh, Planning Board, but about which you should be aware. Um, first of all, the questions. Um, I'm, I don't quite understand what's going on with that half story on the west side. It seems as if um, it is contemplated at some point to be public space because there is a central staircase going from the west side on the first floor up to the second floor. Um, and that's quite important because um, obviously it um, speaks to some of the issues that the Commission has regarding the mass of the west side of the building. Uh, but it's also important because um, if that second, if that half story is going to be used as public space, it's going to dramatically change the parking requirements for the plan. Obviously, that's not specifically within your purview, but I do think more inquiry about what the plan is for that um, second story or half story or whatever we're calling it, what that is. Uh, I also have a question about this mound. Um, it was just touched on briefly tonight. I have really no idea what that's doing on this site and its function. Um, it's hard to see because when we see it in two dimensions, all we see is some topographic lines. Uh, but it seemed to me that that could significantly affect the visual presentation uh, of the site from Main Street. And I go up and down Main Street all the time, so I'm very fond of the view from Main Street to the two beautiful Victorians uh, that are really the crown jewel of that, uh, of that uh, district before you get to the Dickinson House. Um, so those are some of my questions. Uh, my critique, I think, is much along the lines that the Commission has already identified. The fenestration on Main Street just makes no sense to me at all. I, 
I don't know what that's doing. I don't know what it's quoting. It just doesn't really make a lot of sense. And as you travel up, I, I, I understand that it's a very challenging project because it's in this zone where you have some residences, you have some commercial, and then you have these amazing historic buildings at the crest of the hill. But this building doesn't quote any of the, uh, the two Victorians that everybody looks at when they travel up and down Main Street. And I think that's a shame, and I'm hoping that maybe with um, whatever the applicant comes back with, that we can see something that reflects that uh, beautiful historic uh, view shed that we all enjoy in Amherst. Um, so those are uh, my questions and critiques. I think that the, the discussion about the, the door is also very important, but I just think that the, the facade from Main Street just really doesn't make a lot of sense. And then finally, an observation, and that is that from my review of the site plan, it looks like the applicant is proposing a 10-foot setback from the front uh, property line. That's going to be a problem because um, my reading of the Amherst zoning bylaw is that a 20-foot setback is going to be required for this property. And the reason for that is because this property and this applicant wants to um, have the benefit of having this use treated as an educational use but the Amherst zoning bylaw requires that in this zoning district, if you are going to propose an educational use, the setback for that zone is twice what is contained in the Amherst zoning bylaw. So if this weren't an educational use, there would only be a 10 foot setback. But because my understanding is that it is going to be an educational use, there's a 20 foot setback. And again, that's really not within your purview except to the extent that you have the jurisdiction to, um, to uh, gather information about the site plan. And uh, in, in my view, that's going to be a very significant problem. Thank you for your time. Okay, thank you. And um, yeah, thank you. Uh, so I think we'll move down the row. Uh, do you, did you have comments? Okay. Um, so, yeah. Uh. Okay, again, if you could state your name and address. We appreciate that. Thank you. I'm Robert Spicer. I live at uh, 38 Gray Street, which is the Henry Hills house. And I, um, I concur with what I gather is the sense of the commission that what we're seeing tonight is a big improvement, providing much better answers to what remains, as far as I'm concerned, a very bad set of questions. Um, Amherst Media has persuasively demonstrated its disregard for the Dickinson Historic District and its neighbors by not maintaining its property at Gray and Main Streets throughout the summer of 2019 until the evening of August 12th, when Bill Gillen, their architect, got onto a tractor and mowed it himself in preparation for this meeting. The organization has offered various explanations, ranging from Mr. Gillen's explanation that they couldn't afford to mow the property to this evening's explanation that it was an ecological uh, reason. Regardless of the real reason, the Gray Street sidewalk had become all but impassable, and the approach to the district and the center of Amherst had become an overgrown, trash-strewn, vacant lot. Now Amherst Media proposes to construct the first contemporary building on the Hills family's former property in over 150 years. This raises grave questions about the station's uh, intentions for its property, and the project's aesthetic appropriateness, and its impact on the character of the surrounding district. In addition to the visual impact of a contemporary structure and the undetermined effects on vehicular traffic, there is concern about what will happen to the area in the future, particularly if Amherst Media vacates the property. 
The proposal relies on waivers available to educational not-for-profit organizations. The resulting structure, though, could be transferred to another entity that would never be granted such waivers on its own. This is not just a remote contingency. On March 17, 2019, the Boston Globe reported that community television stations are facing an existential threat. The article explained that as the number of cable viewers declines, so does the funding to public television. The fees that Cablevision pays the town, which in turn pays Amherst Cable Television, are declining. This situation may well be why Amherst Media has been forced to lay off employees. Despite financial concerns, the Amherst Media proposal for Gray and Main Streets entails building a custom-designed structure as opposed to renovating part of the high school. It has been reported that the cost differential of building a freestanding structure is over $500,000, well over 50% of the cost of renovation. Despite Amherst Media's stated intention to build in Gray and Main Streets without paying prevailing wages for labor, i.e. not using union labor. Such profligacy cannot sit well with the donors who are asked to contribute the funds. We are concerned about Amherst Media's financial prospects, but more concerned by the integrity of the Dickinson Historic District. Conceivably, the financial problems can be resolved over time. But if this building is built, it will create problems that cannot be undone. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, I'm uh, Matt Massing. I just have a question for the board and also to get some clarification about Can you the, um, state your... Uh, uh, Matt Massing, I live at um, 1277 Southeast Street. I'm here in the, my capacity of representing uh, Robert Spicer and oh. Anthony Brackett. So I have one question. Representing as a, are you an attorney? Or yes, okay. attorney Matt Massing. So one question, and I think I may need... Um, one of the um, either Bill or yeah to um, just one quick question for the board if he could help me with the slides if we could go to the first slide it shows um, the I guess the elevations well my question yeah to get the the one that shows the, those that okay so there's a pin yeah the, I, maybe I can do it. Not that yeah. pin, but this pin right here. And that's a that's a property line pin. Mm -hmm. Yep. Oh, okay. okay. Now, if we could go to the first to um, the first schematic, maybe A one. Yeah. Was it A one? Oh, up. yeah. Okay. Oh no, you you go go down mm -hmm. one. Okay. So, right here is the pin. Okay. Mm -hmm. And right, and if you move it down, the corner of the building is right. No, uh, the corner closest to the pen. If you go, yeah, right, right there. Now, it may be easier to show right here. It seems like there's quite a distance between this building right here and that pen. But on this schematic here, it seems that the building is pressed to the uh, west a lot more. I don't know how many feet. Okay, so that's just a question I have for the board. It doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be answered tonight. The second thing is, as to as to the encroachments um, and the drainage issue, uh, Amherst Media's attorney Michael Pill uh, contacted me last week and asked me to commence the work that needed to be done. There's a uh, permit to get the work done. Chris Gadera, the butter, is here. He has com uh, communicated with grassroots, and they're going to start. But I just want to make sure that everybody understands that we're not holding back on the work. Amherst Media told us, a uh, lawyer last week told us to start the work. I can immediately communicate it uh, with uh, Chris Gadera, and Chris Gadera is uh, communicated with grassroots, and they will start pretty soon. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, can, can you just clarify what you mean by um, what work's commencing on yeah. the site? Oh, the, the, uh, they're going to move the wall, and they're going to install drainage. Yeah, and they're going to move the shed. I, I just have a question for our staff member. 
Um, my understanding was from other situations that work that was begun before permission was given had to be stopped or undone until permission was given. Yeah, I, I think, uh, you know, I'd have to confer with colleagues about this before, oh, you know, I, 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 Christine. Christine, Chris. Good evening, I'm Chris Brestra, Planning Director. What I understand Mr. Massengill to say is that the um, abutter to the north of the Emerson Media site is willing to start work on removing items that have been built on Amherst Media's property. That is correct. Okay, okay. Thank well, we you. will, we the will. The drainage question, you said something about drainage, that's all. Oh yeah, there's it. also a drainage issue that Amherst Media has requested we correct. But it seems like the board may need more information, so I will go back to Attorney Pill and not doing it and instruct Mr. Gadera not to do so any you, work I'm until sorry, we come uh, back. You're representing Mr. Gadera? No, I no. represent Mr. Spicer. Spicer, I thought so. Okay. Yeah. okay. But I have to work in conjunction with uh, Mr. Gadera because he's the abutter that needs to start to work. Can I raise a question? Yes. So, uh, Again, this is a question for staff either. Ms. Breastrup or Mr. Malloy, uh, it's one issue if the current owner of the neighboring property on Gray Street makes a decision to move his or her own fence. It seems to me another issue to deal with drainage on the proposed building. Are those two separate issues? The first one of which would not need commission permission, but the second one of which would? Yeah, your question raises a point, right? So if there's any changes to something on the neighboring property, it may need commission approval first. So you just can't take down a fence or move something if it's, I guess the question is, is it what property is it on? But you know, the, the commission needs to review changes, removal of features. So if there's taking down a fence or right. erecting a new structure or taking down a wall, that typically needs commission approval. Uh, I'm just, okay, yeah, well, so what I'll do is I'll get back with the uh, Amherst Media's attorney. We will not do any work until uh, we come back in front of the commission to discuss the work we're doing. Yeah. My, my hope you. would be that uh, all lawyers concerned would be in touch with Mr. Malloy. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> okay. Thank you. That was a, um, is there anyone else on this side of the room that wanted to speak? And then I'll go, I'll move to this. Uh, yes. But we should get to everyone. Yeah. <laughs> Good evening, uh, Madam Chair, members of the committee. Uh, my name is Eric Wilkinson. I live at 20 Gray Street. Okay. Um, and I am here to urge you uh, to again deny the certification of appropriateness for this project. Um, and I'm here for several reasons to support that. Uh, first, um, I've served on commissions uh, like you all are on now before in the past and I realize that some of these decisions are, are difficult. I think they're especially difficult when you're dealing with an applicant um, who sort of makes a specialty of the good old fashioned bait and switch. Uh, they told town meeting, for example, that they were gonna build a 2,700 square foot building their application before you today says 3,600, but we heard 4,000 just a few minutes ago. So what's the real size of this building? No one really knows. The developer said that the lot were, was in fact undevelopable, but here they are trying to develop it. They said that no other properties in the town were suitable for development for their purposes. That can't hardly be true. They said that they were engaged in ecological restoration which hardly passes the laugh test, especially when they're gonna cover one of the sites uh, with impervious surfaces. They say it's a one-story building, but it's 32 feet tall. Um, so there's a lot of problems and concerns, I think, with the nature of this development altogether. And finally, I would like to remind you uh, about the purpose uh, of the local historic bylaws here in this town. 
And, this, and I'm going to read for a second, if you'll indulge me. The purpose of this bylaw is to aid in the preservation and protection of the distinctive characteristics and architecture of the buildings and places significant to the history of the town of Amherst and the encouragement of new building designs compatible with the existing architecture. So I see that you're trying to work on the second part there, making this compatible, but there's still the first part. I don't understand how this project at all will aid, aids the preservation and protection of the distinctive characteristics and architecture of the building and places in this town. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Um, I, I just, I, I think I said this last time, kind of as a caveat to this, is it, it just kind of a reminder, it's not within this commission's purview. We can't become involved in the kind of activity that happens. So if, so it is zoned for non, residential activity and we can't get involved in in usage that's just you know not within our purview but Understood. thank you um, I'm going to go to Mr. Guadera because you haven't had a chance to speak did you want to, you still want to speak I do. yeah okay thank you very much my name is Chris Guadera I live at 219 Strong Street um, I'm also uh, owner of um, the abutting property to the north and the property to the east, as, to the west as well, to the east. The, um, the first thing I'd like to say is that um, uh, I could probably answer most of the questions regarding neighboring properties because of that, but um, the, I have an issue with the, I would like the, the board to note that the model that's being presented and the slide that's remaining on the screen um, <clears throat> actually presents a, uh, a, a multi-scale illusion. The, the buildings are not at equal scale, the positioning is not at equal scale, and so to piggyback on what Attorney Massingill was saying, um, it's, uh, it's actually an illusion of being smaller and less obtrusive than it really is. Um, the I'll move on to, well, without repeating what others have said regarding the height of the roof and all that, um, it is uh, a one-story building with a two-story height. Um, so I'm not sure how to call that one a one-story building, but um, I, I have some questions that I would like uh, to be asked at some point or presented. I'll just read them off rather than take up time. And, uh, and uh, one is, um, I have concerns about this uh, building or structure at the northwest corner of the property that's not in the models but was in the drawings uh, discussing compressors uh, for, for the air system. I'm assuming it's the HVAC system is what's probably being spoken of there. Um, uh, I, so my issue is and my questions that I would like presented are, um, are there noise studies that will describe how much noise those are going to put into the bedrooms in my house, which are right there? The, um, they've done a, the drawings show them pretty well separated from the Amherst Media proposed building, but uh, they certainly don't separate them from my building, which is right there, uh, just to the north. Um, You're on the other side of the fence. You're on uh, the other side of the fence. Correct. Uh, actually, the, the fence, well, it's hard to tell with these drawings, but the fence doesn't reach the end of the property. The fence is only a partial length fence. Um, I'm sorry? That helps. Thank you. Um, yeah, sorry. The, uh, another comment I'd like to make uh, moving on is that uh, although the, the colors seem to be appropriate when they pick uh, white, brick, gray, etc., but um, Basically, as somebody else said, there's no, there's basically no structural matching of the, uh, of the neighboring historic buildings. Um, then, the other last point that I'll present now is that um, uh, there's mention, repeated mention of fence, of a fence that the, there will be a white fence or a gray fence along the side of the building in the other slides that will um, fence off. Uh, that this property from the other properties. However, I'm not sure how a fence can hold up the ground that's going to be behind it. I think 
that might not be realistic, but it's a question to ask or to, to be reviewed, in my mind at least. Um, the elevation is quite a bit higher on, on the both north side and the west side. So a fence, I don't believe, would hold up what's, I believe it needs to be held up wall-wise of the, the ground elevation there. Um, and as far as uh, the actual property lines and uh, the negotiation of, um, uh, with neighbors, uh, uh, I could say that I would hardly call it negotiations, but that's, um, uh, some people just plain call it a lawsuit instead, to be honest. Um, that would take more resolution, um, that is taking more resolution than it easily could. If you want to know right now, I can tell you all that before Amherst Media bought the property um, and before we bought the 14 Gray property to the north, we already owned the 446 to the west, to the east. To the east. But when we bought the property to the north, it already came with structures that were actually over the line. Okay, and um, uh, so those structures are there. A fence, a shed, part of the driveway, um, and, uh, and drainage stuff, uh, material that's draining, wherever it's draining, but those were already there before, and those are some could be minor, a fence, that may or may not need some approval that I don't know about, but, um, and some are more major. But uh, those are long been in existence, um, not just a new thing, oh, that a neighbor just put a fence where it doesn't belong and just pick it up and move it either. So it might be more complicated than that. I won't take any more of your time. Thank okay. you. Okay. Thank you. We've written down all your questions. So. Um, is there anybody who hasn't spoken that would yeah. like to? Yes, you haven't. Okay. Uh, Tony Brackett, I'm at 38 Gray Street. Um, I would just two observations if I could. If you're traveling from the east over the train tracks towards the center of town on Main Street and you see this proposed structure and you think aesthetically, how does it fit into the neighborhood? What was proposed today is very sad because just beyond that, up Gray Street are some beautiful homes, historic homes that were moved there because it was an historic property and we have historic homes on, on the historic property, but you've got a modern building that just looks very sad to me, very misplaced. And you get past that and you see these two really glorious mansions and this structure has nothing to do with anything on that parcel that you see. It reflects n none of the aesthetics that you see there. I appreciate that you're speaking to how you can make the structure fit in and look more residential, but there's nothing commercial on that block. The commercial buildings are across the street. It's okay to have those buildings across the street all look commercial, but why would you want to have something on this side of the street look commercial from this, because there's nothing else commercial on that side of the street. That's my, um, my first observation. And then the second, if you're walking down Gray Street to Main Street, if you look at the three homes, starting far left, middle, and the next, there's an enormous setback from the sidewalk. And then you get to this new structure that abuts the sidewalk, not only on Gray Street, but on Main Street. And that's something you see in a city the buildings are right on the sidewalk. But I will argue also that in a city, the sidewalks are much wider than what we've got here. And I find it grossly inappropriate to have this structure. It makes it look much, much larger than it really is. You have to take that into consideration. And if they move that structure west, then it's going to impede on the view of the Hills House. I don't see a solution here other than finding another location. I just, I'm, I'm disappointed. I appreciate the effort to make it look better than the other proposal, but if you actually walk down the sidewalk or you drive from the east, it's completely misplaced, everything about it. Not only the aesthetic of it, but just having anything there is just totally misplaced. Thank you for your time. 
Thank you. Um, yeah. And again, that just uh, maybe in response, when we did our site visit, um, we did notice that the setback was different. Again, we have to kind of take that up with the, the planning and zoning board as, as to what, how we can weigh in on that. That's, yeah, I know, but yeah, no, we, we know, but it gets, uh, it sometimes gets to be um, a fine line, but we are addressing that. We, we, uh, we noted that and I, I share that concern. Uh, thank you. Is there any, we, well, it's, we're running right up against 6.30, but if there's one, we could probably take one more comment. I don't want anyone to have come and felt, it, would this be the last? We'll take two. two. Yeah, okay, so we will take these two. Two minutes. Yeah. yeah. Can you keep it to a couple of minutes? Yeah, okay, thank you. One minute. Um, hi, I'm Katie Lazdowski, and there is a bias, but I don't live on Gray Street. I live up in North Amherst. 20 Overlook Drive. Um, I came here today just to kind of see how this process works, see what's going on, and um, just to hear the public comments around the issue. And I think some people are contesting it and questioning, um, you know, the viability or longevity perhaps of Amherst Media and the appropriateness of uh, this building for Amherst Media's purposes. And I just want to say, I think it's what better location than the historical district should our Amherst media be placed? You know, as someone who cannot often make it out to meetings such as these, given family and such, I make great use of streaming the meetings and staying abreast of all the things that are going on in our town. Um, and so to be able to host a, a building that, or a, rather to construct a building that hosts Amherst Media in the historic district that is capturing history in the making, if you will, seems so appropriate to me. So, I want to thank you all for putting the attention to detail into the design of the building. But quite frankly, again, making that drive up Main Street, again, not being aware of the conversations that are happening, I'm kind of astounded to see the level of detail we're discussing because when I drive through and see, you know, Bruno's Pizza and everything else, I'm not really thinking, whoa, this is an aesthetic place. So I think the way it looks, again, that's just my eye, but thank you for all the effort you're putting forward. Thank you. And one more, yeah. Hello, uh, Jessica Wilkinson. I'm a resident of 20 Gray Street, and thank you again for this opportunity to speak to you about this project. Um, I spoke at the previous meeting about this project and greatly appreciated the attention that you all provided uh, to the first design uh, and the four recommendations that you made at the time, um, which at least one of the members uh, referred back to. Um, greatly appreciate the fact that there have been a lot of changes to the project, uh, first and foremost, moving it closer to the corner. Um, very much appreciate that. Uh, there are, uh, I think, still some significantly um, concerning issues related to the other recommendations you made um, that have been raised today about, number one, lowering the height of the building considerably. Um, yes, it is a one-story building, but as many people have noted, the height of the roof is pretty extreme. and overwhelming and it does not read like a one-story building, particularly when you're facing it from some of those angles. It is massive, as, as some of you have noted. So um, although there's fewer stories, the height is still very significant. Um, also, the, the forms, um, as many people have noted, also remain a significant concern to me, as well as the last recommendation you made about um, ensuring that the building is designed in such a way that it's consistent with the uh, pastoral landscape of the district. Um, I just wanted to note that, you know, there have been a lot of, I think, great concerns outlined by staff, which I really appreciated the thoroughness of that, and I urge this board to um, really take those seriously and make sure that those issues are all addressed, um, both the issue of the mound and the architectural form, and then the, the list of, of issues that are outlined there. Um, those remain big concerns to me, and I hope that they are, they're all resolved and addressed uh, before we're done with this. Um, 
And the other two things that really concerned me today were whether or not this is actually to scale and whether we are getting a real sense of how far this building impedes on the view of the Hills House and the historic district, that whole landscape from the Hills House up to the Emily Dickinson House. Um, you know, the models to me seems inaccurate uh, in terms of scale. Um, and then the last issue I would just raise is uh, related to that, um, the uh, question of, I guess, a 3D model, I'm not sure if that would resolve this, but really to be able to, much before anything is, moves forward on this property, to really understand the long-term implications of having this massive structure on the corner that would impede this um, incredibly value, valuable viewscape that is such a cornerstone of, of this town's historic character. So okay. thank you very much yeah. for this opportunity. Yeah. Thank you. Um, can we take one more? Yeah. Yeah. You, you can, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, my name is Demetria Shabazz. I am uh, a resident here in Amherst, 29 Chapel Road. I'm also the president of the board of Amherst Media. And so I'm speaking from both of those positions. Um, when we think of history, I really appreciate the, uh, what was given last time in terms of guidance. I think we've tried to uh, take that into consideration. Obviously, there are more details to work out. I don't think they're major. I have uh, lots of confidence in Bill Gillen and his group. They have uh, really worked with us and tried to consider the neighborhood and the aesthetics. I simply want to urge you all, uh, in terms of your bylaws, to consider your task. I remember coming um, before you, a different group, but before you, a uh, little over a year ago and uh, being very excited at the possibility of creating a new construction um, and we would be the first. And we understand that and it's a difficult task and we're really trying our best to adhere to uh, the council and the guidelines and I ask you all to, to work with us. Uh, we're still very excited about trying to build in this area. Of course, it suits our needs, uh, which is very desperate at this point, being that we are renting, and uh, Eversource has basically given us uh, this time in which to work out where we're going to be. We purchased this property in 2013 with the hopes and with the knowledge of knowing it's a historic area, so we are trying to work with you, and I just would ask that as a place that also regards history, we are 43 years old, we are the oldest, not just in the state, but we might be the oldest cable access station in the nation that is still operating. And I ask you to regard that history as you consider uh, what counsel and guidance to give us. I think that's very important and the service that we, of course, bring to the community. So again, um, I'm asking you to look at your bylaws and uh, we are the very first, uh, as I understand, a new construction and just simply work with us and be patient. Yeah. Thank we, you. We appreciate that. Thank you. Okay. Sure. So, um, to yes. So I want to thank everyone for their comments and um, we will continue. I think we'll probably start the next meeting if we we'll have other we'll have other cases. We'll have other cases, so I would say we could still start at 4:45. Just I think we are we're going to have two or three other cases that that night. This is on September 9th, right, so right, we'll so. schedule could, again for 4:45. Well, sure, could, okay. could we confirm with Mr. Gillen that that the 9th is feasible, or that that possibly you want more time? Yeah, and even if you don't have new drawings, we would still, you know, if you don't have new information, we would continue this meeting, which if there's, in terms of public comment, and then we haven't had a chance to deliberate among ourselves. So um, I do have to ask this for point of order. If um, the meeting is continuing, do we adjourn or? Well, no, yeah, well, we need a motion to continue. We need a motion yeah, to, continue. to continue, okay. And then, okay. 
So, uh, the motion to continue the hearing until uh, uh, was it 4.45 on September 9th. 9th. Second. Okay. okay, all in favor? Okay, yeah. So, thank you all. Um, thank you for coming in. And you are welcome to submit any comments to uh, Nate Malloy between now and the next meeting on September 9th. Thank you.